sanctuary and I'm hanging out over there. I'm just so thankful that you know younger Aisha this is like my her dream ye aaya chandri kar aap nahi own karti i wish i wish my great grandfather was like it's my role and i'm going to take it i truly Abhi wish bank plaza aapka nahi hai <laughs> these people are faceless nameless losers who are so pathetic in their own lives that all they can do is to make me feel bad look at what you've done some look. people don't get that and i can complain about it which i did used to and i did play the victim about it i don't get a break i'm losing who i am or i focus and i think okay yeah yeah, yeah. i think the worst one is ke uh, mai 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 kutte jaisa <laughs> <laughs> मुझे भी आप शेल्टर पे ले जाए मेरा ख्याल कर ले दे से मेन आर डॉग्स या आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द ग्रास रूट लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन आई डोंट टीच एबीसी 1 2 3 आई टीच एम्पैथी एंड एम्पैथी हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ द पाकिस्तान एक्सपीरियंस और ऑलरेडी मैं बहुत इंटिमिडेट हो रहा हूं बिकॉज़ पॉलीमैथ वर्ड इनके लिए इन्वेंट किया गया था बाय द एज ऑफ 20 शी हैड कंप्लीटेड हर मास्टर्स हाउ शी डिड दैट हमें भी नहीं पता शी इज अ जर्नलिस्ट शी इज अ साइकोथेरेपिस्ट हर थर्ड डिग्री इज इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड फिलॉसफी एंड शी इज द एनिमल मामा ऑफ कराची द फाउंडर एंड सीईओ ऑफ एसीएफ uh animal rescue aisha sundrigar how are you doing i am very well how are you doing good 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 kit kaise kaise kar leti hain nahi maine to be fair i was 20 i was turning 21 when i finished my master ye kaise ho sakta hai because i was a very ambitious restless child so i just had to keep working so i was doing internships by the like when i was like 12 13 and i started volunteering at orphanages and rescuing animals and all when i was about 10 So I've been very like I'm very restless. Like I must make a difference and do something. So um, yeah. So that sounds I, like the fake autobiographies they write about people like Lincoln. By twelve, <laughs> he was running an orphanage. How no, were you doing so much? I wasn't so running it. I was just <laughs> volunteering. So you were volunteering at an orphanage at twelve. Yeah. Because I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because uh, and I feel like I mentioned this before, but and I don't want to be a broken record, but uh, I'm very aware of death. and like i know i'm going to die at some point so when i die i keep having this idea in my head that the last thing i'm going to think about myself and my relationship with me i want to die a proud death so i want to do something good have you seen hamilton the uh, musical yes i actually just saw the musical when to like it mai ho No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> because he had that same feeling, you right? Know, I'm not throwing right. away my shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, right. I never made the connection. I didn't really think of that. <laughs> But it's true, though, right? Because this is this is this is the only life we know. This is the only person that I know that I am, and I want to try and experience everything that I possibly can in life. So I think I just um, and and plus I think I'm a functional uh, depressant. because i've been severely uh, depressed since i was a child at the state of the world around me so it used to um it has pained me like i used to get anxiety attacks when i was like 5 and i used to tell my mom mama my heart is hurting i can't breathe i don't know what to do and i didn't know what it was because i genuinely couldn't bear suffering that i would see on the street so it took a very bad physical toll on me so it really pushed me to be like i need to do something to fix this i know this podcast was to celebrate you and all the work that you've done <laughs> but since we've already gone down this rabbit hole yeah uh where do you think that's coming from as a psychotherapist yourself because I for mean, f- for years i also felt like you know f- for me to deserve a seat at the table i need to do something yeah. i need to bring something mm-hmm. to the table just being was not enough how can yeah. i just be how can i just exist like my achievements need to be who i am or things i do need to be who i am as opposed to just being and existing and experiencing life uh so, so did you uh, go through a similar thought um, process you know i uh, i think for me it was uh, it was more like i went through a lot of pain in my childhood and i could connect with other animals and humans pain from a very young age it was very i was i grew up too fast lots of trauma everything you can think of bad stuff but i grew up very fast 
and i i was very my eq my iq sucks but my eq is actually through the roof kind of so i i'm i'm weird and i'm very grateful for what i went through because i i wouldn't have the capacity that i have emotional capacity that i do have now uh, to read the room to read people to read situations to even read animals you know i don't have any actual experience in animal behavior but i can pick up on things in like a second so i think for me it was definitely i have a savior complex i mean that's like it's pretty obvious i built a career around it so, i mean savior. i run a rescue shelter <laughs> i mean it couldn't get more obvious right so yes i have a severe savior complex um is that whole you know no one rescued you so and i can't bear anybody else suffering the way i suffered so you know it's it's always i i think such beautiful things like a rescue would come would be born out of pain essentially because if you don't understand the pain of another how are you planning on helping another and you can only understand the pain when you've been through it it's that idea be who you needed when you were younger yes so uh, the that is actually uh, spot on because 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 what i've done now like when i go to my sanctuary and i'm hanging out over there i'm just so thankful that you know younger aisha this is like my her dream So you know I get to go there and like let my inner child out and just of course when it's not like crazy work which we'll get to uh but uh, yeah so th- that was like it's like a tribute to my younger self that and I think I really And it's great that it. you can probably do that for so many other people as well because I see so many people's stories and it's almost like therapy for them that if they've gone to ACF to volunteer they feel cathartic they f- it feels therapeutic to them to be yeah. around baby donkeys all day it is you know it's one of those things where and i'm not being biased but honestly acf has this really hopeful energy that i have never seen anywhere in the country it is and not even in any other shelters i've seen abroad and i've been to many because i had to see what am mm. i doing how do i improve you know all of that it's very unique because every animal has been severely abused and they've been through insane trauma but how they heal and how they come back so it's not in fact last night i was there till 3 a.m. i had to i finished work at my office i be in defense only at 8:30 p.m. i ran home i sat cuz i'm i'm changing i'm expanding my team so there's a, just a lot of back and forth but there's one dog who hadn't got treated that day and i was like not cool and i need to make sure that dog has got treated so i called my vet back i went back my manager went back at maybe 11:30 at night and i didn't get home till 3:30 in the morning was it much as i'm dead and then i had to wake up today and run around and work 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 and quickly like get my head in and then come to you to look some i no abdullah chai nahi aaya um so this is the for many people that yeah. walk in the road that you're talking about it it can go down either end right a lot of people uh, the whole idea of cycle of abuse cycle of violence a lot of people go down the route of oh this is how i was treated now this is how i will treat of others course, as well yeah. as opposed to going down the route that you went down this is how i felt and i don't want anybody else to feel that way uh where do you think that decision comes from as somebody who's also studied this yeah so so what is there anything that we can um, uh is there anything that it boils down to of which path people choose um you know i don't i don't think so i think there are some things which are like the luck of the dice and i think it depends and i do think it's a choice right but the choice is also shadowed and factored in by your personal circumstances and um i guess your attitude towards life since you i i, I think it is an internal thing because then you do make a choice do you want to be the victim or do you want to be the rescuer do you want to try to live a balanced life or how do you want to go about it but i think at the end of the day you are in control of what you decide and where you decide you want to be so if people go go down the path of you know i am a victim forever because i was maimed and hurt in my childhood then that is and i'm sure it can be super traumatic right but that is a choice also after a certain age it's like now you got to be an adult and being an adult mean you take responsibility for your actions and you cannot keep blaming the past and at some point at some point for your own sake forget about everybody else you have to come to terms with things and decide this happened it was out of my control it sucked it was the worst thing that could happen nurture your inner child 
try to heal it's a very uncomfortable thing to heal i think the hardest thing and i think why people avoid it is because it is the, the most boring and uncomfortable thing it makes you feel like shit when you are trying to heal yourself because you all these horrible things about you come up you're like no i'm not like this. then you're to justify yeah but this happened to me and this is why i was acting like this in this situation it's like no maybe you were just being a bitch and it's okay it's better to accept it and say own it like i know if i get angry i get angry and i own it but if i've got angry for no reason i will go back and apologize to the person i don't have an ego in that way so but i will lose my i will lose my shit if someone screws me over in some way now i was very timid before but i become very different but i know i have that in me right and sometimes i'm not really bitchy but uh actually i'm not but say i've got angry and i didn't need to get be angry i know i'm like okay i should that was on me my reaction was disproportionately too large to the situation apologize do you know what i'm trying to say yeah. so i think um i think it does boil down to personal responsibility after a certain while and i think the help that you need to get or want to get or the way you want to help yourself that depends on you it's i mean a lot of times we don't even forgive ourselves for the sins we didn't commit and those Absolutely, are the ones that yeah, keep the, you up at night especially the original wounds right the original wounds that were formed you obviously believe that you are the one who made them happen that's something that you did as why your parents got divorced it's something you did as to why you were sexually abused and nobody else right so it is these it they are the most painful wounds because you can't see them yeah. and that's what makes them worse and sometimes you gaslight yourself thinking hold on maybe it wasn't so bad maybe i'm imagining it you know you try to minimize it you sometimes are even sympathetic towards your abuser in a way that it's it's so difficult to heal you know and those people a lot of people especially in our country we live in such a survival mode yeah. right because majority of the people our average person doesn't have time to heal themselves right to so the people who do have that privilege like when people say i am privileged i say yes i am not because i have like a lot of money or anything mm. i've done everything myself from getting scholarships to go study to building acf i've done it single handedly i had no family support or money or any of that the yeah, ayesh chandrigar aapne own karti hai pura i wish i wish my <laughs> great grandfather was like it's my role and i'm going to take it i truly Abhi wish bank plaza aapka nahi hai how nice would that be honestly i wish i wish it would have been so nice but no my great granddad didn't um but uh but what's really interesting is i forgot my train of thought What was I saying? I have complete. Uh, yeah, you did it single-handedly. No, no, no. Before that, before say something else. Uh, is it about the victim mentality? No, no. How people? I think it's something in the <laughs> between those two. Jokes are not good. They 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 are not good. Uh, oppression which exists in our country but as far as people are concerned somehow in the present day society we've attributed a social value to victimhood and i almost see uh, kids aspiring to be victims even yeah. in places that they're not mm-hmm. and i i just don't know how to have that conversation where yes genuine trauma and genuine abuse and genuine oppression and all those things exist but when you stay in that victim mentality sometimes you find oppression and victimhood where it doesn't even exist Spot and if you on, constantly yeah. see yourself as the victim there is only so many times a boy can cry wolf before even your friends are like okay this person needs to heal themselves and get yeah. out of this victim mentality yes absolutely and you know it's not just about uh your friend is literally for you this is where that whole thing of death comes back right it's like we have this one life We don't know what's happening after this. This is it. This is all you have. If we, this is what I was meaning about. This is what I was saying about privilege. Mm. My privilege isn't money. My privilege is I have my health. I have my brain. I've also been in the darkest moments of life. I just want to not be here anymore. And I've been through all, and I'm not trying to minimize or generalize. Everyone's pain is different. But then there comes a point where you need to be like, okay, but you need to decide now. I am so blessed that I have my health. I am so grateful that I have my mind, right? Whatever I can do with whatever I have been given in this life, I want to make the most of it. Mm. And I think I thought this from when I was very young, when I was even going through the trauma. 
So for me, it came from that part because I think the awareness of death is something we must teach children. We try to make children hide from it. Mm-hmm. We try to avoid saying Nani is dying, or this is happening, or that is happening, or even your dog has died. No one wants Nani to say it. Nani has gone up stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like no, no. It's okay to talk about death because the only constant in life is death. And how can and when you talk about it, that's almost it's terrifying. Yep. But at the same time, it gives you a kind of a I don't know. It it gives you an urgency to live. And I think a kid would really appreciate. I think kids do appreciate honesty. And I think if you share that with them and make them see that look, this is your one life, and make the most of it. It doesn't have to be depressing. It's it's your perception of it. which is what i think um absolutely i think uh, even when you feel like it's your fault sometimes all you need is robin williams to hug you and say it's not your fault yeah. it's it's not your fault yeah it's not your yeah, fault yeah yes absolutely <laughs> and 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 you know this is um this is one thing i like about my shelter right so animals so what i've done is i, I when i was a therapist i can't be a therapist anymore cuz i have absolutely no time in life you're an animal um, therapist now now It's i'm an Dr. animal Doolittle. therapist uh, yeah i guess kind of <laughs> but when i was a human therapist right i was working with children who've undergone severe drug addiction and sexual abuse so i was working at a a, a facility for them And so then when I couldn't go anymore right because I got busy I kind of gave up therapy properly and when I just got busy with ACF so I was like look I've got this incredible place right where the animals also heal each other you will see like this really old fighter bully dog who's been through the worst abuse ever but when he comes here he's really aggressive and then he calms down then he attends to adopt like five puppies as their grandfather like these are five orphan puppies whose mother was poisoned and then the next thing we know, Know they're sitting in his cage and they're jumping on him and pulling his ear, and he's he was meant to be this aggressive, mean dog, but he's so sweet, and this is what he ends up doing. So when you see such stories happening in front of you, you're just like, whoa! Like it gives you this really big picture of what the world is and the universe is. It's so much bigger than our problems, right? That's when I start inviting all these kids over just to hang out. So a lot of these young boys who've been through the kind of hell that you and I couldn't imagine, mm. okay, on the streets how they've lived. But they would be like, "Dekhe, uske teen tange hai, lekin wo itna khush hai." Because a three-legged dog doesn't know he doesn't have four legs. They don't know they're lesser than, or they don't feel lesser than a four-legged dog. So they're noticing things like he's running as fast as a four-legged dog. He doesn't feel any difference. And I was like, yeah, because the main thing is they just don't feel. Uh, with humans, we don't feel good enough, right? When we realize we are enough and exactly what we are, and nothing needs to change, that is when the world starts. I think they it, the the world opens for you. The moment you realize I am enough. So my aim was, look, I can't provide actual therapy in that way, but I can provide therapy through the medium of animals. So I, 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 I would sit with the kids, and I would just be like, yeah, you know, look mm. at this, this, this dog came, and she was paralyzed from the neck down because a car had slammed into her so badly, and we did physiotherapy on her for like six months straight, and now her back legs, her, her hind legs still don't work as much, but her front legs are fine, and she's like the biggest bully and the meanest dog. At the shelter who wants to kill all the other dogs because she loves humans and she hates other dogs so you know what i mean they get these funny personalities so i'm sitting and sharing all these stories number one it's nice because you get to humanize animals mm. as opposed to demonize them without preaching i hate preaching i don't like naming and shaming and i don't like preaching to people i think it's very condescending and it's just not my way of working. So what I do is I like showing through stories and I like sharing and I think whatever you absorb from that and you translate into through your own experiences that is growth. It's also so much learning, right? I think you said once that once you unpack layers of aggression what you find at at, at the heart of it is sadness. Yeah. And so even in the cases of the pit bull that you were talking about a lot of times it's not the pit bull it's maybe the people that the pit bull was with it's maybe they that. wanted him to be a fighting dog that's yeah. how he was trained so once you develop those yeah. instincts that's how the, pers- the 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 dog would react Absolutely. and you take it into a different environment uh it changes and and sometimes i don't think we even give humans that leeway we no. just think they are who they are and 
and especially in the world of social media we put people at their worst they are who they were at their worst possible moment and yeah. there is no possible redemption mm-hmm. for these people now and yeah that whole cancel culture stuff and i, I found a tweet from 2002 i don't even know when twitter was there but he was like this so what you don't give people a chance to evolve you're not going to give people a chance to grow and what you want them to keep begging you for forgiveness and reduce themselves to say sorry once yes let it go and then start seeing give the person space to to make amends right but you cannot sit there wagging a finger and being the moral police when you yourself are probably not a very good human being you know yeah. what i mean and on social media everyone is a social justice warrior and it really irritates me like in fact i've been told you know you must speak on every topic that comes up i'm like why cuz it'll give me traction or Yes, that's yeah. pretty much it. Or am I speaking because I genuinely want to? But my opinion doesn't need to be on everything. <clears throat> Even if I have one, I choose to reserve it on a lot of things until I'm comfortable to talk about them or if I want to talk about them. And I'm not one of those one-trick ponies who'll pick up any cause at any moment because it's a hot topic just to talk about because I'll get traction on social mm. media. I could do it, but I don't choose to be like that. So whatever I, I, I do in my life and whatever I do talk about, I'm very mindful to always keep my main cause, which is the animals. Um, as some sort of connection to that so be it the businesses i was telling you about be it the um the kind of uh, content i put out there right you'll always see something of um of of what i do and i i think is here yeah it's yeah. also about protecting your <laughs> mental health right because if you Thank start you. talking about everything pakistan makes you fight a war to you know for every single gas yeah. of breath yeah 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 uh, what are we fighting for today just release a movie that we want to see yes. in the cinemas i mean is that something that hundreds of us need to go war with risk being labeled all kinds of things this is not something in most countries uh that that you'll risk your almost your life over because you know the allegations from the other side which will be hurled at you but just to see a movie hashtag #release joyland yeah yeah just, no, this country they, makes you go to war in fact i just heard about that yesterday right they are not releasing yes. joyland which does like I, but, after and, being cleared by all three censors so boards. and what is the other side cuz i haven't like uh, what are they, the usual the usual, okay, the usual. It, i mean it's it. transphobia which is masquerading mm. itself mm. as islamic values even though agar aap uh, खलील रहमान का मर की जो मूवी थी काफ कंगना विच वॉज फंडेड बाई द स्टेट उसमें आइटम नंबर्स थे उसमें वो इस्लामिक वैल्यूज चलती हैं बिकॉज इन इन द वुमेन हैज़ नो एजेंसी राइट चीज दे टू बी ऑब्जेक्टिफाइड दैट्स एक्सेप्टेबल टू अ पेट्रियागल सोसाइटी मेकिंग ट्रांस पीपल द बट ऑफ द जोक इज एक्सेप्टेबल वो तो टी वी पर भी रोज रात आ रहा होता है पेमरा को भी कोई इशू नहीं है बट फुली फ्लेज कैरेक्टर हु इज ट्रांस एंड हैज एजेंसी ये थोड़ी ना हम बर्दाश्त एजेंसी इंसान इंसान ट्रांस इंसान ट्रांस इंसान को हम इंसान दिखाएंगे ये कैसे पाकिस्तान में हो सकता है नो इट्स द आई एम डाइंग टू वॉच जॉयलान बाय द वे आई कॉन्ट वेट टू फाइंड सम वे ऑफ वॉचिंग एट um but yeah so this is um but again this is what happens right anything that we are uncomfortable with <clears throat> we choose violence or censorship and censorship is a form of violence for sure so we use all forms of violence be it covert or um what's the other one covert, covert. or overt right to find ways of kind of weaponizing whatever we are our 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 beliefs and thoughts are about the topic and i find that very because we just don't want to be in any form of discomfort yeah. so how do you expect one to heal themselves or want to want to heal themselves when we've grown up in this insanely toxic culture where <clears throat> this is what <clears throat> sorry this is what bothers me so much even about the animal stuff right when i was younger and i would be asking any adult why is the donkey being beaten on the road why is the lion in the cage when he belongs in the jungle in the wild in africa so i'm making sense to me why is he over here and i would just be dismissed they'd be like no but this is normal it doesn't matter they don't feel pain and i was like i'm sorry what, what? like are you joking right now and i was like five and i could see like what the truth is cuz there's fiction and the stories we tell ourselves to make ourselves feel good but then there's actual fact where i can visibly see an animal suffering without having to know anything about that animal it's the lies we tell ourselves to feel better right Absolutely. so even the way the lobsters are cooked 
फैमिली And you know how we keep like sweeping everything under the rug. We're all fine. Everyone is happy. Let's quickly take a family picture and put it up because everything is great in life. <laughs> so that is what we yeah. do as a society. That's a great way of putting it. Pakistan is a desi wedding where the poppo is not ours. It's yeah, yeah. लड़की की मजबूरी से आप शादी करवा रहे हैं. And the, you know the uncomfortable <coughs> lies we tell ourselves to sleep at night. Oriya uh, Magbul Jan went on TV and said, "औरतों की फितरत में है कि आप इनको थोड़ा बहुत मारे ना ये तब खुश होती हैं. इन huh? इनको अच्छा लगता है कि आप थोड़ा बहुत मारे इनको." So I, that that's one way of defending domestic violence. That yeah, women women love to get beaten. हम तो बिचारे मर दिया है, बिचारे मर जाएं, मार लाना पड़ता है, मजबूरी में, just to yeah, I mean, I mean, I doubt hai. there is any other way. Oriya Magul Jan has pleased a woman, so I guess that's the <laughs> only one he could possibly think of. Fifty that Shades, देखने के बाद. That is um, insane. insane like uh, but it's that same idea that we talk about right way where, where you said you don't feel enough and somehow that manifests itself in these illusions of grandeur so yeah. even cancel culture that you're talking about it's not enough to apologize online it's you will need to apologize to me to so me. if if i tweet yeah, at yeah. you yes. apologize to me explain to me uh, uh, why were you silent on this and i'm like go watch the podcast no tell me yeah. <laughs> me i exist online and yeah. you will come to me yeah. and bow yourself mm-hmm. so that i feel more important because in my life i feel not i don't feel enough at all yes absolutely and also when you meet such people in person they are the nicest people to you And it's like I, I because I know when a few times I've been attacked about certain things. I remember everybody. What have you been attacked about? <laughs> Something <laughs> very stupid. It's controversial. <laughs> no, no, it's actually very dumb, and I'm very okay talking about it. There was some. Um, there was a whole. It was the only time in my life I've ever been trolled, and it had the worst mental effect on me possible. And this was last year, and there was you know these two German shepherds who attacked yes. uh, some some somebody, and they had their own issue going on, and some of them dragged me into it, an ACF into it, because they had some their own arrangement about um, they were going to euthanize the dogs, and I'd never seen the dogs, and whatever their reasons were, that's up to them. If they're very aggressive, if they hurt other people, I don't know. I don't want to get into that stuff. But they were giving ACF a donation. This was very public. This was everywhere. And because of the the donation, people started calling it blood money. And then Asia wasn't attacked. Aisha was attacked. And everybody who I think there's a lot of bizarre jealousy and envy as to how did Aisha do this? Which Whatever side I'm doing. was attacking you? Was it the animal rights side? Yeah, funnily enough. Wow. And I was like, really? एक इंसान जो कुछ कर रहा है. Are you joking right now? एक इंसान जो कुछ कर रहा है. Yeah, which is why you know I was very scared to talk about. I'm like, I'm just gonna forget about it because when people troll you, it's better just stay silent and let it go. And I did, and I wish I hadn't because I didn't do anything wrong, and I'm not comfortable with any. But now it's like, come at me now, and you see how I fix you. But I went through about. Two weeks of such severe mental trauma, because I am ridiculously. You know, people say, "Oh, Aisha, you must be so strong." My heart is very soft, so I can't do your work. But if your heart is very strong, you can do your work. It's like no. It's because I have a soft heart. I need to do this work because bec- this is how I feel enough to do it. So when I I was attacked like that, and I was called a murderer, me, yeah. And that is the worst. I think the it it Jan broke me. Ki go. <laughs> it broke me. It actually broke me over animals. I know nothing about, and we made it very clear we never get involved in people's private business. We've had people message us stuff like, "Ah, please break into my neighbor's house and take the husky because they are making it suffer." I was like, "We're not the animal police. We are just a rescue. If I break into someone's house, yeah. even if it's..." Killing me because I can see and hear the animal suffering. I'm gonna go straight to jail. I'm gonna have an FIR put on my organization. Then, then what am I gonna do? Am I gonna risk my entire organization for one life or take care of the 800 plus that I take care of and the 10 to 15 new rescues daily? Right? Do I fight your battle or do I fight the overall battle? You gotta make very hard decisions in my line of work when you're moving with a vision. 
you are moving with a plan you need like minded people and you have to be very focused on where you're going and incredibly funnily enough it's such an emotional job but without rationality and actual logic i would have committed suicide to be very honest about 5 years ago because the kind of stuff you see it is too much gore and blood and trauma and injustice and it is non stop my work this is what i'm saying 3 am last night this morning bam 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 all the rescue started coming in 9 am right my work is not it's a 911 service so we get rescues in at all hours of the night and i mean rescues like someone pouring <sighs> acid down a donkey's throat i saw that news. right someone hitting a mother dog this is just recent ones and she going into labor and all her puppies dying and suffer choking on her blood as she uh, passed away herself in the most painful fashion and people were just walking by they were walking here and there just watching this and no one did anything about it this is actually considered normal and there were kids walking by and they were seeing it and no and that's the part cuz i've seen enough trauma it kills me when i have when i see the animal stuff and i honestly don't think i deal with it because i i am very bad at dealing with grief so i compartmentalize it because i have too many more fires to put out so right now i'm in the process of working on my own grief because i don't know how to uh, and it's a very hard realization to come to cuz it's been 10 years of acf and there's too much inside of me that i don't think i have addressed when it comes to what i've seen um but as far as people go they are so indifferent to the suffering in this way and it just it it i i guess coming back to my point is that the kind of stuff that i see and the kind of work that i do and then being attacked or pulled into someone else's mess right that is not my mess to begin with and then people attacking me when i literally have nothing to do with that that was the first time i've experienced trolling and i was silent and i just gave back the money i said please take it and go and i'm not interested at all but i just had to hear not acf everyone loves acf aisha aisha likes to be on camera aisha likes to get dressed up yeah i do i'm a girl i i love girly things i'm super girly why am i going to feel bad about it aisha the latest yeah i am i speak very good english and i'm super educated i am a latest but look at the way i'm using my latest ways i'm owning it and i'm doing really well with that so i was very apologetic for that time and it really broke me for a while i was so broken for maybe 3 months i thought i was a murderer and i couldn't leave the house and i have rescued over 30000 animals and i have gone through hashtag me too has nothing on what i have seen in my life to make acf real and possible and the kind of sacrifices i've made and i this is what i mean i could play the victim or i could be like hang on no these people are faceless nameless losers who are so pathetic in their own lives that all they can do is to make me feel bad look at what you've done look and my my two pillars who are my two these my 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 girls who work with me who have known forever they brought me out of my room they said come to the shelter now this is after like two weeks of me not being able to move my hair was falling i couldn't eat i couldn't function i couldn't sleep i was in a really bad state i was taking xanax to sleep i had such bad anxiety i couldn't function because i just kept hearing attack 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 about me you should go euthanize aisha you should do this wow. you should do that uh, she cares too much about the way she is she doesn't care about animals it's like i'm so sorry do you do you want to sit and talk about the kind of shit i have been through to make this possible because let's get real then and my girls they literally pulled me out of my room and said i don't want to go anywhere i just need to stay they were like aisha you have not been to the shelter in 2 weeks you need to get up i was still and finally the people who were trolling me were still sending us rescues a uh, please isko yahan se le le iski tang to tv hai ye yahan se le le aisha the bitch <laughs> like, okay so they're using my service but i'm a horrible person so and i was still taking the rescues quietly because i'm not going to compromise an animal because a person is a good for nothing you know what but um so when my girls took me out and i went to my place and i just saw the my place is the most peaceful beautiful place my sanctuary and i was like yeah i did this i built this place i put every brick i built i planted every tree i brought every animal i did this and my journey has been a very insanely hard journey of 10 years of uh, non stop it's non stop trauma that i have uh, faced and i was like no now and again then i remember death 
and i was like well, i'm not going to uh, apologize even when people watch this podcast good i hope they bring it up let them bring it up to me and let's see what they say because i love for people to come to my face because everyone is very nice and sweet to my face but i know exactly who the people are as well but my thing was look at how small random faceless nameless people can make you feel yeah. and this is why social media i have to use it because it's a tool to make awareness for acf and it's a tool to fundraise for acf if i don't share content i can't raise funds right so i have so one of the biggest parts of my job is i have to make content for acf and then if i had my way i would be a writer living in the mountains and you would never hear from me cuz i don't sound even exactly like me <laughs> really yeah. really i don't I, i don't like social media so my thing i've had to become an extrovert i'm a complete introvert i couldn't even talk cuz my stammer was so bad so i couldn't i wasn't that person i like reading books i like listening to podcasts and i like to hide and be alone and just think about thoughts and write them down you know but I know I had to do this. I had to really heal and change my ways and become the person that I am proud to be and the person who can do justice to this cause. I'm so sorry that you had to go through so much and it's these people don't matter. Uh these people like to feel better about themselves by attacking somebody that j- what they really hate is somebody else getting recognition, somebody else getting attention because it makes them feel shitty about themselves. So rather than getting out of the house and doing something and yeah. making something of themselves it's much easier to say oh ye badi animal rights activists ah. banti hain idhar dekhe inhone ne ye kiya hmm. inka ab ye 10 saal ka kaam ye wash away ho gaya Done. and now suddenly i am better than this person hmm. all all you people say you know uh, aisha jindri is so good but ye dekho usne ye kiya now suddenly i am better than you yeah. and everybody who likes you is also problematic yeah. everybody who supports yeah. you is also problematic um I mean I don't know if this happened but uh, in No it didn't happen because I think there were more people who like me and they know what I'm God. like because I'm really I'm very honest and I'm very transparent and I share everything whatever I'm feeling like you'll see you'll see it through my posts on ACF I'm an incredibly emotional person and I like learning and you know just reading a lot so whatever I learn I share it in whichever way through animals on ACF and now I've activated my own Instagram so I share a little bit over there so I I think people know and I think my work speaks for itself so no matter how many PR campaigns were against me they didn't hold up because honestly I know I have the my niyat and number 2 I know I have this weird energy and protection from the kind of work i do because the animals and the kind of protective energy that i feel like they give you it's a very weird thing to say but there is something when you are so closely interlinked with something like this i think if it's good work the universe doesn't let it die down it's when you're hit with negativity obviously the instinct is to respond in kind yeah. uh, but once you go down that gutter i don't do that either. yeah i never respond so, negatively even jab mujhe pehli baar attack hua tha and actually i think for the first few years because i was also very young when i started doing social media was, how how was oh i think main facebook pe content banana shuru kiya tha 2010 so i was 21 mm. and this is also uh, you're a little baby <laughs> Ha huh, and this is also not when social media was such a big thing where everybody knows I mean people grow up with social media mm-hmm. so by the time they're 21 now they've been on social media for a decade yeah. I'm hardly less any that was a new thing so for the first few years I would respond and I'd be like you know why are people saying this they don't know me like okay let me respond and then i realize if you put your head down and keep doing good yeah, work you'll never be able to silence the negativity but if you increase the positivity if you increase the good the negativity will just feel so small in front yeah. of that so all you can do is amplify the good as opposed to trying to fight negativity with more negativity yeah and i think you made a very good point because even i was initially with acf imagine it was such a new concept in pakistan and people were still critiquing me no one even done it and yet i was being criticized and told what to do what i really hate is advice that i've never asked for when i ask you for advice give it to me if i don't please shut up do you know what i mean that's number 1 but number 2 my people please aside came out i am i said i i am still i catch myself now i was a huge people pleaser like i was one of those people where i would completely compromise myself on every level just so i could make sure that someone else is feeling good about them so like i'll put myself down when i know i'm in a stronger position i'll dumb myself down i'll seem like i'm an idiot right just so i make another person not feel uncomfortable 
and and that's my own issue that's not anyone else's issue and i think this responding to people i did the same i tried to fight every battle i tried to make sure everyone understood my heart and my vision and what i was trying to do and then i was like no 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 either i spend my time doing this and win the popularity contest yeah. or i work my ass off and i let my work speak for itself it's also that assumption that oh everybody is like me and they're approaching you with yes, clean hands yeah, and yeah. oh they just don't know enough let me show them mm-hmm. the other side and they'll understand yeah. but if somebody's approaching you with unclean hands and is disingenuous the way that they're attacking you yep. it doesn't matter what no, you say not at it all. doesn't matter if you show them the evidence it just they they stuck on a position because taking that position gets them some attention or some clout on social media yes and you know there's something i think envy is a very big part of it yeah. i think and envy is not i i don't know if it's so much about money and this and that i think envy is more towards people who feel who seem like they know who they are and they are very put together it's like healing yourself yeah when you've healed yourself unhealed people hate you because they can see a kind of contentment in you there's a kind of energy like i know my energy has shifted so much since i i know i've been healing myself mm. and the kind of work i do it really makes you it's like holds up a mirror to your own wounds and you can't ignore them so my work is like wham like it's like a double whammy of like emotional turmoil mm. it's personal animals it's everything um but i think this is what people don't like they don't like it when you are healed and you are content and you know who you are and you don't just this is why i say please don't give me unnecessary advice because i am very focused i know what i want i study enough i read enough i'm not saying i know everything mm. but when i i'm if i'm doing something don't come in and give me five ideas like what i don't like is when people say hey aisha i love your work tell me how i can help that is actually in fact robert green the author said this and i was like oh my god that makes so much sense he said when a person is asking you how they can help you they are putting the task on you to help yeah. them help you yeah. when you never asked for it in the first place cuz it's such an exhaust okay now let me figure out a way as to how to tell this person how they can help tell the simple ways are you know you can send for example mm. a donation you can visit you can volunteer there are all these ways that you can help but it's like no but i want you to tell me or you sit with me and you first heal me and then i'll help you heal more animals and how and i was like that i would rescue people all the time now i'm like no i that's not my job you know there needs to be boundaries i know people see me as a savior and i and i think i i was such a people pleaser that i really did become the savior for not just animals but for people as well then i was like no i need to draw a very healthy boundary over here because i've lost who i am so i actually this was an entire progression of uh, understanding this which is why i made my own instagram active like no one knew who aisha was I, they thought aisha was some old woman who died and asia was abdullah, named after abdullah her abdullah thought she was 50 abdullah <laughs> what you thought i was 50 i am kidding i am joking like after seeing me or before seeing me like, after seeing you thought you were 55 so Thanks, man. that's really <laughs> nice of you i I'm really kidding. appreciate it Thanks. It's thanks. it's how these children feel better about themselves. Yeah, exactly. How has Aisha achieved so much more than fifty? It's <laughs> <laughs> so nice. It's fine. It's alright. It's okay. You can think I'm fifty. I feel like I've lived my life in such a way that it as it's as full as a fifty year old's experience. That's a right? great spin on it. I think it. it makes sense then. So thank you. I appreciate it. So sorry, Abdullah. <laughs> I know you're making. I'm throwing him under the bus. Yes. Right? This is a very deliberate deflection yes, that you are. One hundred percent. For no reason, he's just sitting over there. I mean, it was just not necessary. I'm a, I'm a terrible person. <clears throat> I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> What okay. are you talking about? I don't remember. It's are you sure the author was Robert Green or was it Robert Orange? No, the, that that is that was good. Okay, thank you. That was really good. Redemption, <laughs> that redemption. Was good. That was actually sweet. so good. <laughs> And for context, it's because I don't know the difference between orange and green, so yes. I get confused. Um, it's also the, <clears throat> imagine the turbulent lives that most people live in Pakistan. We yeah. know what Pakistan is as a country, right? So if somebody gets on a bike, goes through the roads mm-hmm. that are Karachi, even if they're capable of being called roads, police wale ko rishwat dete hai, office jaate hai, bahut se galiyan khate hai. Yeah. struggling to make ends meet inflation is a problem puts on tv uh, the tv makes him feel like the country is burning down mm-hmm. and they put on social media to escape from all of that 
एंड देन दे सी यू हगिंग डॉन्की इज बींग हैप्पी देन दे सी मी डूइंग स्टैंड अप कॉमेडी एंड देर लाइक इन लोगों को तो मतलब जला देना चाहिए ना खुश हैं अपनी जिंदगी के साथ दिस इज द लाइफ दैट आई एम लिविंग एब्सोलूटली सो यू सी ओके दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट यू से दैट दिस इज वाई मेड माई इंस्टाग्राम active on its own because number one no one knew who Aisha was as we said 50 year old woman <laughs> right or actually some some people thought I was deceased and this What? was like, yeah yeah and people thought this was because I never showed who I was tribute like, to the late Aisha yeah. Chundrika foundation <laughs> so people thought it was named honestly I named it because I couldn't think of another name I was 23 <laughs> and I couldn't think of a name that I wanted so I was like whatever I'll just name it this I'll become big enough to it's justify like the, it it's like the list that you were on the 12 women it's like Ruth for Fatma Jana Aisha Chundrika and like Gary Bade Bade Lok the पुराने बाबे जिन्होंने या या दैट्स ट्रू बड़ा काम किया इट्स ट्रू एंड देन व्हेन पीपल सॉ माय फेस 6 इयर्स इनटू एसीएफ दे वर लाइक व्हाट शी इज यंग विद आप उनकी बेटी हैं हां हां नॉट बेटी ग्रैंड डॉटर आई चंद्रिका की बीवी थी आयशा चंद्रिका जिन्होंने ओरिजिनली पाकिस्तान में ये फाउंडेशन बनाई थी यस यस दैट्स हैज अ लॉन्ग हिस्ट्री सो अ वेरी बैड नेम नाउ आई वुड नेवर नेम इट आफ्टर दिस एंड आई हैव नो चॉइस इट्स फाइन लीगली नाउ आई एम स्टक बट सो द पॉइंट इज व्हेन आई शोड माय सेल्फ आई थॉट पीपल लाइक ओह शी इज एक्चुअली रियली यंग एंड शी इज डूइंग ऑल ऑफ दिस देन द नेक्स्ट थिंग देन आई आई केप्ट ऑब्जर्विंग द सोशल मीडिया ट्रेंड्स दैट वी हैड देन द नेक्स्ट थिंग वाज यू नो इट्स सो इजी ऑल ही गेट्स टू डू इज प्ले विद एनिमल्स ऑल डे And it's like man I wish I get to see my animals now maybe like three times a week and I spend maybe 2 hours just hanging out with them the rest of the time I have to make content of the animals I have to talk to mashallah and now we have about 80 staff members 80, 80. nice it, like it's a big operation these are all salaried uh workers who are were all in different uh, you know uh, uh, walks of life like my rescue officer is an ex accountant right my main uh, manager like she is my right hand man who i love beyond believe ji ha she was an event planner right so my other right hand woman who i love khumar she uh, is like, well she's still like she's the super techy one of us right so like we have a really fun di- dynamic cuz she's the techy one i'm the philosophical one you know what i mean we all have like our fun nice. little things to play with jihas like the no like she's the i don't take shit from anybody but she's super soft one so we are really mm-hmm. fun and it's all like woman led essentially but uh my point was now there are so many people so there's so much of managing the work right so no one actually sees the amount of work that goes on behind it and honestly just because i don't like social media i just don't have the energy to put up stories i do try sometimes but there's a lot like solar panels ko yahan pe shift karna yahan pe number one buying solar panels is so expensive saving the money for that the monkeys have broken the grills grills ko thicka karo the dogs can chew through bloody cement and iron man so my maintenance costs are insane then you know there's everything the 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 food supply hasn't come right today this stock is not okay let's change this let's do this so the boring stuff that people don't want to do they won't do but they'll hate upon the cute stuff of seeing me yeah. with a baby donkey which frankly i deserve i deserve a little bit of goodness in my life with all the hard stuff that goes into doing it and rather than hating on me get up do it too but do all the boring stuff yes. i had to learn contracts i had to learn accounts and i hate math i can't even like i don't know long division or like anything i don't know anything about math i was terrible as a terrible student but i had to learn stuff right i had to learn about taxes it's so it would, took me ages to learn about taxes but i had to make sure that i know everything that is going on in my organization because i must be able to know because this is a proper legitimate solid organization we aren't just some maidan with a bunch of animals over there this is a well run systematic place and i want to keep upping our standards yep. to another level so right now i'm in the process of expansion with these business models which i told you about so i'm doing i'm starting four businesses simultaneously because well i've dabbled in them before but now i'm going full fledged because I've got this confidence now. I feel that I think I'm good at stuff, and I think I can do it. But it's taken me a lot of time to get that. And I'm like, you know, why not? Is it just confidence, or is it also a supply of Ritalin or Adderall? I How wish. How are you doing I so wish. much? I mean, I if you're coming back from the shelter at 3 a.m. I woke at up at 3 a.m. Yeah. You're like, "Acha, char business or like, uh, how?" Actually, uh, no. When I was coming back in the car, I had my phone key torch on because I had to choose from a shade card. I had to choose five shades because I had to make some. Because I'm doing an entire range of products for my new e-commerce shop called ACF Shop. So I had to choose the deco colors mm-hmm. I wanted to paint them. 
so i had to give them this morning i was like shit i have to quickly 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 get this done cuz my list is insane but i will note down i'm one of those um I'm a very good multitasker but I will get my list done for the day and my list is long so if that means I have to burn the midnight oil and work until 12 or 1 because I'm also exporting my goods to America right now I'm making eco-friendly dog leashes and dog uh, toys and all so I have a lot of accreditation and boring documentation work that has to be done on America timing right so I'm working anywhere I'm working at night so I can be dead tired from the shelter I'm removing a tick from me and quickly saying I will jump in the shower and get on a call and do that and I have to quickly make content for ACF as well but to make content for ACF I have to be in the mood to feel the feelings of the animals then I have to switch modes to go over there so I am um what are you running away from Aisha what is this <laughs> I don't you, I I really staying busy as know, a coping mechanism um, I don't know if it, I, as I told you I am a functional depressant I know I am I don't know if I'm running away though I think I'm running towards I think I'm running towards um I'm very I think people confuse ambition with there's something wrong with you and i don't equate the two i think i am a very ambitious person in that i genuinely want to actually make a difference like i have such a burning passion in me uh that i've been through hell and back and i've still stood tall and i'm able to still smile and laugh and i can laugh about the do- like the dog who was sick yesterday we were like sure is he going to make it is he not going to make it and when we were like okay you know it's time maybe it's go we need to put him down suddenly he sprung to life And we were like what okay so we just cracked up you know it was funny and now he's chilling at the moment he's still down but he's he's a little better but these sort of strange things happen and you know but you need to laugh so my manager and I we cracked up because we were like what a bizarre thing to happen <laughs> but you know all if you so if you can get through life and when you know what you're made of and i know what i'm made of now so i'm like i want to use every talent i have every skill i have and i want to use my mind in the most sharpest way possible to do the most that i can do just not because i'm running away but i'm running towards knowing how big i can be for me because again back to death when i die i want to know i took everything that life gave me from my hands to my eyes to my ears to my five senses to my whole being and i made the most of it so why why not why cuz i was so scared of i can't do a business i don't know how it happens I'm like yeah i can i can do it i can do it really well right i went alone to a trade show in america i was single handedly managing this huge biggest trade show in north america i won best product for my leashes and everything and i have managed to do accounts i lugged all the stuff i put all the tags i spoke to all the people i got all the contacts i did everything one person but it's and i was dead tired but i was like i did it the kind of feeling that you get when you can accomplish something and i love putting myself in uncomfortable situations throwing yourself in the deep end and then finding your way through that rush of contentment and that feeling of damn this is me like i am a badass it's a really good feeling i can 100% relate but it is also about not spreading yourself too thin i mean i'm the last person who should be saying this this is what i do i i this morning i did a podcast for recording this then another podcast a third one goes up um, i mean i just got done with that tv show and i'm going to lahore i have a show in lahore oh then gosh. i have a show in islamabad Nuts. so it's like these different fields all together which have nothing to do with each other but let me ask you a question but don't you have fun I do feel like uh, it gets to me. I mean, it does? so so if I, if I, for instance, the last three weeks I've been barely getting any sleep, and I've had to be like, okay, bus. Now, man, I mean, December, man, I'm going to take it lightly mm. because I need to catch up on sleep. Yeah. So if I, if I, if I'm not getting sleep, that that's a huge red flag for Same, me. So yeah. then I do scale back things, regardless of what's happening around the world. No, I, I, I. So I take certain days which are thinking days. Like I, my nice. team knows I have. It's my thinking day today. Thinking day means I sort of reinvigorate myself by learning new things. I love science. I love philosophy. I love uh, learning about whatever's going on in the world. I love listening to debates and podcasts, and I just love reading. So I will take that day and I will read one entire book, and I will. Uh, sort of ingest as many podcasts as I can. Plus, my journey to the shelter is so long. I listen to at least two podcasts coming and going. So, what reinvigorates me is learning. My brain is ridiculously active, so I need to keep it really excited 
all the time but at the same time i meditate and mm. i do know how to go into stillness and i go into absolute silence and stillness and i do this at odd times maybe 5 minutes at a time and i'll do it at different time of the day because i know how to do both because you need to if i didn't have this balance if i was running away from something i would not be able to have the mental discipline to hold the trauma of the animals that i must hold daily and the trauma of my team and manage to run a well oiled machine if i don't manage both ways so i think when i'm saying healing it's about that balance but for me i love what i do and i it gets too much sometimes which is why i take a step back but i also know okay look my next 6 months is crazy busy because i'm launching stuff i have my picnic coming up i have this big event in february um and it's it's really exciting because i work with my friends so my best friends are my partners and we work together and my sister is my partner and she's my best friend too so for us and then we're around animals or like we all love new challenges and you know figuring out solutions we all are philosophical in our own way so we love having debates and discussions so it's more like you're hanging out with friends but you're also doing something really uh meaningful and exciting So yeah so I think for me it's more I love my environment I I'm so lucky the kind of people I have in my life and it's just a, if I didn't have them it, I probably wouldn't feel this way but I think that's what makes the environment fun and uh plus you know there's something else I I saw recently I saw a talk by Yuval Noah Harari and he was talking about leaders and he was saying you know it's so unfair that leaders are told you know it's very easy for someone like him he's an author to go on a meditation retreat for like a week and switch off your phone but a leader who's in a non-stop job right they don't get that sort of privilege i don't get that kind of privilege and i told you the 911 service it's non stop some fire i'm putting out daily even though i have managers to run all of this but bigger things happen where i need to be the decision maker over that so some people don't get that and i can complain about it which i did used to and i did play the victim about it i don't get a break i'm losing who i am or i focus and i think okay This is what I see as boring work. I finish up the boring work in the morning. First thing I do. Then the rest of the day is left for the creative work, right? So I've I don't know, I've trained myself in a way where and because I know I'm not going to get a break for like a month. I'll never get that. For me it's not I can never I don't I can't afford to scale back because the price I pay for the rewarding work I do is that I can never stop. And it took me many years to accept that. that i have dedicated my life to this even if i have a relationship which is very hard to do when you're working so much mm. but or if i want to you know get married i want to do something like my mother's after my life for the love of god just get married you are 35 years old <laughs> now you're on the shelf you know getting stale like, on sure. the shelf yeah yeah i'm on the shelf wow auntie <laughs> i'm like literally on the shelf i'm just sitting over there <laughs> gathering dust so that is me at the moment which is fine i've told i'll meet some tech entrepreneur you know in <laughs> silicon valley at some point in the future and then we'll see it's like uh, there's this tiktok trend where like aise karogi to kaun tumhe rishte bhejega and then the girls are like all the boys in my dm <laughs> and they show like a list there's so many like half <laughs> the question half the questions i got were is she single yeah i'm like bye that's acf ke bare mein pooch lo tum log literally somebody was like me? yes literally so many people were like uh, somebody asked she said how many men have uh, tried to flirt with her under the guise of activism oh like, my god that's like, a really sure good so question many. that's a really good question cuz the answer how is can countless. i yes. how can countless. i help acf you can donate oh and yeah, how yeah. can i I take you out for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got this a lot. Actually, the funny thing is, so when people are message this, we always just I've told my managers also give give my father's number. So if you'd like to help, mm. please call up Aisha's father, and he will help you. And you never hear from is like crickets chirping now because you never hear anything again. So this happens um, quite a bit. Uh, also, men want me to save them, and they feel like if I save animals, maybe I can help. Maybe a gadi ki tarah, oh. literally. Ah, uh, I want to vomit <laughs> at that line. There is an animal inside. Yeah, oh. oh my god! I can't tell you the number of times. Tell me the worst ones. Tell me the worst. The, the worst pickup lines in this way. Maybe a gadi. Ah, I think really? the yeah yeah. I think the worst one is that ah, I I I I I cut the jason. मुझे भी आप शेल्टर पे ले जा मेरा ख्याल कर ले दे से मैन आर डॉग्स यस या या बेस्ड एंड आई वाज लाइक आर यू 
You know, I didn't laugh. I didn't. Yeah. It was like it's just revolting. Honestly, it's Trauma. really bad. And everybody is an animal lover who wants to help animals. So help. There's ACF. Contact ACF. There's our donation stuff. If you want to know anything further, email us officially, and you'll find out. But you aren't taking me out for coffee. That's not happening. <laughs> and now it's become that you know because like I I didn't have an office. I couldn't afford an office. Whatever little money I was making, I had to keep putting it towards the shelter. But obviously, as you build an accounts mm. team, HR team, you need an actual office where you can sit with our animals there, right? So now I have a little space which we're now expanding in defense only. And so after se- eight years, I finally got a desk. So I, yeah, but now I that, then I gave it to my father. So I still don't have a desk. So I now get a desk in my new office. I'm off. I like sitting. Like I don't know how to use a laptop or a computer or Excel or anything. I just use my phone for everything. So I watch stuff on my phone and do everything. I don't. I'm incapable of using. I'm really bad at tech. I don't. I can't. Like Google That's Drive what is like my name. Khumar, she is that. She is that too. So they hate me because yeah, I I screw up and then they have to come and they have to. Fix everything. So, but now I say come to my office and you can meet over there. And then most people don't ever show up. <laughs> you know, it becomes like that. But it's like no, it's not. उनको भी नहीं समझ में आती ना. They said, oh, हम तो ये पचास लोगों की मैसेज भेजा था. Somebody actually said, come to the office. Yeah. हम क्या करें? Office. करे? There's no other way that they can. They'll message AC and be like, we'd like to meet Aisha. You know, this is very important. Please send her WhatsApp number. Why am I going to send you my WhatsApp number? Who the hell are you? Zero three hundred two seven. सीम्स लाइक Uh, you won't listen to anybody except for your own version of things, and you will be screaming and shouting to put your point across. I think that's the typical definition. You know how the de- the definition of feminist people associate that as being angry or whatever. People have changed the definition. Although the definition is so beautiful, they've done the same thing with activist. So I try to avoid that label as much as I can. I call myself an animal rescuer, but um. activist it's as i told you i don't like preaching i don't like giving lectures to people i think i prefer putting it's like because i'm a therapist i guess i've been trained as a therapist i a therapist doesn't tell a person what to do to fix mm. their life they will give them the tools to learn themselves as to what to do so i essentially do that on a societal level so you'll never see me telling people what to do i'll just say look this is the negative ramifications this is the positive ones this is what it looks like this is a story now you decide right yeah. so i think uh, that's what i do it's it's more a uh, pacifist in a way but it's not because i'm in the field and i'm working it's just a like i as someone called me a gentle warrior and i really like that term because that makes sense because i'm i don't i don't like being i'm not mean i don't scream i'm not that person i'm softer i'm very soft and i like sharing and letting people and like giving them the space to create their own opinions chip and dale rescue rangers uh in terms of um, just animal rights in itself uh it's sort of also become cool for everybody to mm. now be like oh yeah. we stand for animal yeah. rights and s- i think it's fair to criticize some people over the fact that it's also easier i think for um, a lot of people to say that they're I mean, everybody needs to stand for a cause somehow. Now, yeah. if you're a celebrity, I think you must stand for a cause. Yeah, yeah. Even if you stand for it or not, just in terms of your PR. Now, mm. PR agencies are like, "Koi to cause apka na, mm. apko champion karna chahiye." <laughs> yeah. And somehow, as as crude as it sounds, as rude as it sounds to people, it's easier to stand for dogs and DHA than it is for Baloch people. Yeah, it's much easier, right? It's not politicized. It's not. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so and no, I never thought of that actually. I never thought of that because I was just thinking, "Chalo, at least people are standing up for animals." Do you know what Don't I mean? Don't you think that a lot of people do it for PR? Because I also know some people, and then they say things, and then they do different things. Really? Ha ha. So um, honestly, I haven't paid as much attention, I guess, because there's just too much. Because other than ACF, I just filter out all other animal stuff because it's too much already. Like you know, people love sending me cute animal videos. I never watch them. Because I and I can't watch movies about animals either. So they be like, "Oh my God, you must have seen this." I, I know I just don't 
because since ACF, I just have this aversion to anything. Any animal stuff. I can't do it because I I see enough. So I sort of filter out whoever's talking about animals or whatever. But look, the way I see it, because it's one of those causes that nobody has ever spoken about. So if somebody is even talking about them a little bit, it's just a plus. Simply because it's a cause that no one has spoken about. It's become popular after like ten years of me groveling and trying really hard. So if people want to talk about it, great. But if they're doing it for their own PR, then everybody knows who a one-hit wonder is as well. Mm. right but so i mean for me the way i the 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 thing that i would say is that pick a cause stick to it otherwise it doesn't make you look legitimate so if they are jumping from cause to cause i think that is the part that they need to sort of it's also sometimes people start speaking about a cause without really understanding because yeah. they also don't know what oh, they're yeah, talking yeah. about i mean there was a celebrity who was giving an interview and she said you know i'm such an animal lover okay. uh, mere ghar makhiyan bhi aati hain to main unko dabbe mein band karti hu aur phir then i huh? uh, go to a nice place where they can be free and i let them out there and i'm like I'm sorry what? I mean you know when people say this thing I hate makhi say just, things like this how do you not <laughs> roll your eyes and you're like acha theek hai I yeah. want that person that celebrity should come to the shelter when it is feeding time and there's the shit of 450 dogs and the amount of makhi is on that poop that then come and sit on you before everyone cleans the poop up then i want to pick up all those makhi <laughs> in her precious dabba and go put it somewhere okay at that time i'm like Kill these trees. Animal <laughs> rights activist Aisha Chundrigar <laughs> is a mucky murderer. Genocidal <laughs> exposed. No, I'm genocidal tendencies Listen, of I'm animal of rights activist yeah, Aisha Chundrigar exposed. I can't let Pretends them. Pretends to like animals. Exactly. Mucky haters. No. <laughs> Racist against flies. I don't like muckies. You I'm know, sorry. You know, people say things like this. You're just like, yar, Khuda ka khauf karne ya. Yeah, I don't think I've ever saved a mucky. Like I mean, I have. I'm not going to physically go out and I like, try to keep killing them. But you sit with so many mukhis on you, and like mukhis, it's just. I mean, it's dengue season. Imagine being against the fumigation, right? Like, uh, how can you? Uh, uh, it's, like it's, what? It's, now you like mucher? No, it's like it. It's like liking ticks. Ticks on dogs. You know, like oh, you can't kill them because they. No, it's like okay, I'm. I'm going to kill the ticks. I'm okay with it. <laughs> Please. Certain things I'm, um, uh, you know what I mean. So not something that just sounds ridiculous. Then yeah, and like even so, for instance, if somebody is a lot, I've seen these videos a few times where somebody's sitting in this elite car, mm. which costs God knows a mm. few crores, yeah. and then they make a video of a donkey cart, and they're like, you know, look at this savage man oh who's God. assaulting. No, he's a poor man. Yes, who has no other. Mm-hmm. So it's fine to have empathy for the donkey, but maybe also extend some empathy for the person, and you if know, you feel so yeah. bad. उसको गाड़ी खरीदते हैं बिल्कुल आप या आई थिंक सो दिस इज वॉट आई टेल पीपल एज वेल वट आई डोंट लाइक या आई गेस आई नो आई आर ऑन टू वॉट यू सर वट पीपल डू इज विच इज रियली बिजार वन आई ऑल्सो टॉक इन इन डिफेंस ऑफ जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड अ डोंकी ऑनर अ डोंकी ऑनर इज वन ऑफ द पुअर इज डेली वेज इज इन आर कंट्री इफ ही इज लकी ही मेक्स टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी बक्स अ डे जिसमें इफ ही इज अ गुड पर्सन ही विल फीड इज डोंकी थोड़ा सा फ्रॉम दैट और फिर वो चार रोटी लेगा एक अनियन लेगा एंड दैट्स ऑल दे ईट ऑल दे हिज फैमिली ऑफ एट बिकॉज आई एम ऑन द रोड विद दीज पीपल ऑन अ वीकली बेसिस हेल्पिंग द डोंकी बिकॉज द डोंकी इज द ओनली सोर्स ऑफ इनकम सो इफ द डोंकी डाइज और समथिंग हैपन दे ऑल स्टार्व इज वेल राइट सो ऑल ऑफ माई प्रोग्राम्स आर वेरी होलिस्टिकली डिजाइन वे योर हेल्पिंग ह्यूमन एनिमल एंड एनवायरमेंट बिकॉज यू कान एक्चुअली हेल्प एन एनिमल विद आर हेल्पिंग अ ह्यूमन एंड पीपल आर सो एंग्रे दैट यू लाइक एनिमल्स हाउ डे यू स्टैंड अपर ह्यूम एंड आई एम लाइक आई एम सॉरी हाउ इज इट एन ईदर और exactly and then it's the same for animals so i then reverse it and when people say how can you like animals you do such good work you should be doing it for humans and i'm like no i i'll do it for animals but why i can still be good to humans mm-hmm. why why does con- why does kindness come with conditions it's either or why aur aap kar le matlab sab sab yahi kare nahi and then about the donkey wali cheez right lots of people like if i'm out for dinner or you know something or the other I'll meet people they'll be like oh my god aisha you know you tell you something that i actually was so angry cuz yesterday i got out of the car and i yelled at a donkey wala for beating his donkey and i was i'm quietly just listening and now i've just started saying like you know what that's a really for other people please so i would be like okay and i just stay quiet Now I'm like, do you know what? Actually, that donkey wala, you got in your car and you left in your air conditioned car, very satisfied. That I am the moral police mm. who did something to make a difference. That guy beat the shit out of the donkey after that because he was humiliated. 
And if you actually have empathy, then you have empathy for the person and the animal over there. You try being in the heat on a growling stomach, dehydrated, uh, trying to make, to get from one part of Karachi to the other, to make it at a certain time with the traffic to make 250 rupees. Okay, and then going all, you're going to be angry, you're going to be in a bad mood. Doesn't justify taking it out on the donkey. But there's a better way of dealing with it, which is why I do these donkey medical camps. So I befriend the owners and I've made my own union of owners per se, who we give their donkeys free medical treatment. We even give them the vice to take home for their donkeys to continue treatment. They know where our shelter is to come for free treatments whenever they require. And we teach them about donkey behavior. Ki agar aap usko nahi maare, I went to study donkey behavior because I'm like, donkeys aren't stubborn. And then I realized they're actually not. Donkeys are just very empathic and they're very careful. So they, and they're super intelligent. They take their time to get to know a person they also see like this and they don't see like this so when they're in traffic they are hesitant because they can't see that's where why they, they are make going. them wear those blinders yeah so you see it's very odd right so can you imagine how scared this animal is and a broader donkey is used for equine therapy for autistic children because donkeys have this capacity and i've done this myself when i was in the uk that the donkeys have this capacity to Hold your feelings. So, and then they start reacting accordingly. So, children who are not able to articulate how they feel, the donkey starts acting accordingly. And then the child picks up on the donkey's feelings and tells the therapist. And that's how they start talking. How wow. wonderful is this? Yeah. Donkeys are that incredible. So, when I learned this, I tried to do the same thing at the shelter a little bit with, with people also. But, you know, there's so much beauty to an animal, but you can't expect someone who is living in survival mode his whole life to get it. That's elitist. And that is frankly very condescending. It's also very condescending to say that only poor people abuse animals. Yep. From what I've seen, it's a middle class. The person and the, the lower middle class and the middle class who can afford and the upper actually. The ones who can afford a motorbike Right, they can. I've seen them myself. They'll stop. They'll kick a dog, a sleeping dog, on the on, on the road. Because I'm out there in the sun, neutering and vaccinating dogs with with my team. Motorbike wala is seeing what we're doing. There's a dog sleeping quietly, minding his business. Stop, kick the shit out of the dog, and then you'll drive off. Now you don't. Ex you can't expect the dog to not get angry either if that's all he ever sees or and that's all he ever feels is pain from humans. Right. Same with the donkey. The donkey is going to be stubborn, not stubborn, he's not even stubborn, he's going to be careful because he can't see. Now donkey owners did not know that they see from here and they don't mm. see from here. So when we told them, they were like, Acha, that's really interesting. So then they come up with their own ways of saying, Acha, madam, shayad hum ye kare, shayad ye, because I'm sitting with them, I'm giving them the respect, right? And you're just talking, I'm not going to dantify them and be like, ye, aap aisa kaise kar sakte, aap do zag mein chahe ge, ye hoga, wo. Man, sh just no. Who the hell am I to say that to someone? I don't know. Right? This is what I mean by I don't like. That's elitist yes. and that is very condescending. I hate all of that. And some of the, like Abhi, we just recently had a donkey camp in a new area. And my team called me and they were like, Aisha, um, there's a problem. I was like, what? And they were like, there are no injured donkeys. Everyone is super healthy. So we don't know what to do. So I was like, okay. So they were like, they're really fat. They're really happy. And everyone is doing really well. Like, I guess, leave. So we met like 45 super healthy donkeys and the owners take really good care of them. And what we have done is we have given the donkey owners carts, which are like these model carts, which we've designed because right now the cart is like pieces of wood, which have like a wheelbarrow tire and a jeep tire and they're uneven. So when you put weight, obviously it breaks the donkey's leg, the cart breaks. So I've given them carts that drive like a car. And I've given them these humane harnesses because they were made to believe that if you put nails in the mouth of the donkey and the bum of the donkey, oh. then you make them bleed and they'll run. So you see, everyone is living in the survival trauma mode constantly. And I'm just like, let's figure it out. There's always a way. Let's make it better. But for that, you can't yell and you can't attack people because then you're shutting down any mode of connecting with them. You got to make a connection with them. As much as it kills me to see the donkey in pain, it kills me. But if I don't harness my empathy to be able to understand where the owner is coming from and yeah. to respect him in his capacity, 
I am not going to ever expect him to take care of his animal. It's because those people don't genuinely care about the animals. It's just another way to feel better about themselves. They got off the car, they screamed, and they're like, "Wow, yeah, great job! Yeah. What a great Absolutely. person I am!" And yeah. look at what the devil this person is. Even when uh, the floods came, there was this uh, newspaper headline that broke pretty much everybody's heart, and it said. Um, a father saw a buffalo drowning and his son mm. and he saved the buffalo because he mm. said if the buffalo drowns four more of my sons will die hungry oh as God. well that so is so the notion that anybody who uses animals for anything is the devil and is the worst person in the world it's but very few people have that notion it's just a very few of the uh, no i mean if you look at a lot of people who pretend to be Yeah, but uh-huh. donkey cart is the central thing. It's yeah, it's, yeah. it's on everybody's but stories. See, but, uh, but it's I'll about demonizing you, the donkey cart owner. That I get. That I get is just that. But if you look at the general public, majority of the people still see animals as objects to be used for our violence and for our uh, pleasure. So majority of Pakistan would not think like this. Mm. You see, we've gone uh, to two extremes. We've gone to the extreme of hate. anybody who does anything to an animal without looking at the circumstances or we've gone to just hate all animals there's no middle where i am trying to be which is the stable mentally healthy thing to do which is where it's like no we are all actually connected yeah. and you got to help everybody if you actually want to uplift society if you really want to make a difference then you have to actually help everybody mm-hmm. and that goes for every like even schools i will you know i tell schools very openly that your teachers are so ignorant about animals right that they themselves give such a negative um perception to animals uh, that people that the kids are absorbing that and that's what they their action they they'll translate that into actions right so i prefer when i've been now i've been uh, i've been asked to come to schools a lot to talk and i say no number one i say no because number one give a donation to acf for my time otherwise no which people don't like to do uh but it's like no i have enough experience you give to my cause and i will come to you number two and this is only for private schools and corporates of mm. charity schools are very different but number two is i say why don't you have a session with me and the teachers because i need to teach the teachers who are consistently sitting with the students because it's their behavior yep. it's the caregiver's behavior that the student will mimic it's not this one off thing that you're doing that will look cute on social media right that i was there talking to your kids i'll do it for like 5 minutes but don't waste my time i actually want to make a difference i'll make that difference if i can get through to your teachers and they get through to your students it's that brownie points right oh look we just did a session for animal rights yeah, yeah. oh we did a session for women rights yeah, and it's very superficial and we right? did a session for labor rights even yeah. though we don't pay our employees yeah. <laughs> even though we're terrible yeah. but like it's one of those things so but the people who do talk about animals right it it is very few in number that's maybe like maybe 0. I said 10% of the population at large who are probably the ones who use social media who might go to that extreme of say how could he you know do it's, something it's, or the it's other it's about you know like you said it's meeting people where they are and bringing yeah. them to a yeah. more empathetic uh, if if you start from a place of look at these monsters and often times around. class plays a huge role it's very easy to call out a donkey cart owner yeah. but if your cool friend has a has a, a lion at home yeah has a lion or a, even has a husky right mm, like yeah. why so many people have a husky wo game of thrones mein aa gaya wo milta julta tha So I've, I've never seen Game of Thrones. It has skis. It, it does, and it has okay. dire wolves. But okay. the closest you can to pretend that you are Jon Snow, <laughs> okay. uh, you get a husky in Karachi. It doesn't make any sense to have a husky yeah. in Karachi. It's torture, right? Of but you have to keep it. And even if you have a guard dog, and you're like, "Yeah, look, he has a certificate. He has a husky breed. He has a pedigree. He was a champion. Father was a ten-time champion yeah. of something or the Isn't other." Isn't all of that torturous to the I, animals? Absolutely. But that's all acceptable. Yeah. उस दिन मुझे किसी ने बताया कि ये एक कोई अंकल है उनको बस रात को गुस्सा आ जाता है कभी कभी तो ही जस्ट गोज एंड शूट्स डॉग्स एंड आई वाज लाइक हाउ आई हैव सीन दिस अ लॉट एज़ वेल लाइक हाउ इज दैट ओके लाइक एंड एंड डीएचए में एंड आई वाज लाइक कि क्या गनशॉट किसी को नहीं आता हमें नॉर्मल लगता है लाइक नोबडी केयर्स इफ समथिंग गोस डाउन ऑन द रोड गेट्स अ गन आउट ऑफ द कार शूट्स अ डॉग ऑन द स्ट्रीट एंड दैट वी आर ओके विद दैट that is essentially what happened and I, even i'm just like what but this is very normal and because there are no animal right laws 
in the country that's why it's a, it's even a good Isn't thing that people that's not illegal by law to no. to no to shoot there's dog. no no it's actually not illegal it's not anything because the animal right laws that do exist don't, don't even mention this point so it's not anything right now so um so i always encourage people to talk about animal rights i just don't encourage them to go to the extremes where you start hating humans which on some mm. levels it is very easy to hate humans because humans are pretty horrible mm. majority of the time like okay i'll give you the other extreme Ac- across the lines hate kare na yeah, not like exactly. along ethnic nee, class lines uh, exactly. like be like me hate all human yeah, beings yeah i'm the same you know but it's more like like but then but then i'll give you another example i go to empress market right i try to fix up empress uh, empress market is my hell if there's a hell for me which would be designed for me it would be putting me in empress market because the sounds of stadar and of screaming animals of all sorts in cages dying and begging for water for food uh for some kind of help it is the kind of trauma i get every time i go there i cannot tell you and i can't shake it off it has it's really bad and neither can my team it's very hard and so our thing was look we can't shut this place down because it has roots i don't know of and i'm not touching anything political i don't go to mm. all of this stuff uh, all i can is try to do what i can with what i know and who i know uh, right now and try to help make things better over there but those owners are horrible human beings because they they have the ability to help the animals not even help just don't make them suffer give them water ducks live in water but the ducks are starving that they give them a little bowl where they are all putting the but they they live in water mm. and they are in the sun there's no chow and they know what the right thing to do is they still won't do it is this what these are people who sell ducks these are people who sell all animals Achha. persian cats all sorts of fancy breeds of dogs sare jo chori ki hote hain the whole pet market over there so yeah. they know how to keep the animals they deliberately choose and they have the means to do it they make a lot of money but they choose not to they are horrible people i will yell and scream still doesn't work but i know who to go nuts on and i know who not to go nuts on do you know what i mean so there is uh, but again i don't go nuts on them because what's the point is not going to help So I went not the first few times I went over there. Then my two again these two girls who work with me they were just like did that help Aisha and I was like no <laughs> they were like maybe it's time to control your anger and I was like fine so I went back you know, and I tried to be a little like emp- empathetic which I was I'm really not there I'm faking it I'm faking it completely because they are just bad people there are bad people and There are, and these people are not just bad to the animals these people go home and they beat the crap out of their wives and they probably abuse children and they are just horrible human beings because if you can have so much uh if you can be so desensitized to the such an obvious form of suffering it doesn't stop there you enjoy seeing things suffer and these are the people who abuse animals who end up abusing women and children that's just a psychological fact I mean, study philosophy. That's essentially metaphysics of morals. By Immanuel Kant, the argument, right? Yeah. That if you tell, I mean, he about posits animals. that even if you think that there is nothing intrinsic evil about torturing animals, but if you do mm-hmm. abuse or torture animals, you will abuse and torture human it's beings. It's a given. It's a standard, and I can categorically confirm even anybody who engages in severe, like in any form of domestic violence, right, towards their wife or whoever, they have all engaged in some form of. you know maybe throwing a stone at a dog and laughing when the dog yelped or something or the other there's always something Matlab, of that sort aap namaz padhne ja rahe hain aur aap raste mein kutte ko laat maar dete hain huh. like do you, imagine a god imagine yeah. a god that you speak of who's all loving do you think he will be happy with that act like in what world do you live yeah but again people don't want to see the truth and they want to believe the stories just what we started off with and they want to believe that you know this and the, from what i've seen is that people want to live in a very small world the world is very big and mm. it's very beautiful you know even our dusty streets of karachi i sometimes try to find the beauty in them how because when i go for a donkey camp and i see this woman with no legs that she she's working a donkey and she's trying to make money by you know like going and getting things and transporting and i'm like man can you imagine the kind of will it takes to do this every day she has no legs she's on her body and that her thighs and she's still doing it and i'm just like you know there's there's a very uh, tragic beauty in this but it's still beautiful 
you know so it's about how you look at things and we like to look at things in the most narrow minded way like remove anything which is not like us which is not the norm you know be intolerant towards anything that doesn't fit our toxic standards of what life must be it's so suffocating of yeah. yeah it's so suffocating that it's i just people are incapable of looking at nuances right which why i love yeah. doing podcast because mm-hmm. you get the nuance out yeah, uh, i mean people absolutely. probably would have assumed and i've said the donkey card thing before and some people are like why do you hate animals and i'm like in what world huh? am i yeah. hating on animals by making that argument uh, it's people like seeing the world in binaries yeah. it's it's either you agree with everything i mean a lot of times I don't know what your opinion on PETA is, but a lot of times some PETA activists are criticized for the same, right? There was this white woman who went to India, okay. and there were uh, these chicken on the street in cages, and she opened all of them. She's like, "Let the birds free!" And people, the poor Indian people who were selling the chickens, are like, "Bye, मतलब हमारी रोजी रोटी है." And it it was done for the web, right? She made a video, ah, went viral, okay, and was it, like, "Look at me being this activist, yeah. letting chickens free in India." वो रोड पे बचाई चिकन्स करें भी क्या वो वापस आके उन्हें पकड़ ली. So That's it's it's uh, what what's your general take on PETA and some of the things that they do? Honestly, I don't really look at too much of it hmm. because it is uh, I see enough graphic content, as I said, so I can't see a lot of things, but. I think from a very overall point of view if you look at how the animal rights movement began in the world it was really hard and it was really hard to get people to even understand that the that they deserve a voice so just like any movement that is taken to two extremes right where you must find the middle ground i think peter has done good stuff I think whatever it is you'll always have those odd balls in any mm. movement right even though like over here you'll have the odd balls who are going to just be complete animal and hate people and all of that stuff you have the odd balls but the movement itself matters so if you take the birds i view i think it's it's wonderful that because you know again this is another thing that a lot of thinkers have said in the future just like we thought the holocaust now when you think about it it is the most inhumanely horrific thing you could ever do to humans so a lot of thinkers have said in the future in 2050 we are going to be looking at that the way we looked at the holocaust we will look at the way we treat animals because animals are sentient beings mm. we don't I mean there's so many layers to this to get into but um the the way we treat them is beyond horrific and in pakistan what i have seen is by far some of the most horrific stuff i think anybody has seen anywhere in the world because we genuinely have too much hate and violence in our selves and we have grown up in this toxic culture of hating anything that is not normal whatever our definition of normal is and this is where intolerance come from it comes from for so many other things so i think in that regard i Because there's such few people who do talk about animals over here, I say, man, at least they're talking about it, right? Because it's been a very hard. When I started ACF, yeah. I was the only one talking, and the kind of hate I got, like I've had people throw poison. At my my ex 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 landlord, him and my the neighbors at the I had to move four shelters in one year, and they I was a young girl and I was alone, and they had thrown poison meat over the gate of my shelter to kill my dogs. So I could hear them screaming in pain, and I had to go save them. But they put a thala outside my gate, so I couldn't go in. They have tortured just because. How dare you give your dogs a pankha, and how dare you so take care of them? So what's going on? So I've had things like this happen, where like they've stolen my bijli, where I had like two fans in a fridge. How much would my bill be a month? And I had like five lights, barely anything. I got a bill of two lakhs. when i had like 20000 rupees in the acf account and i was like how cuz they were stealing my bijli do you know what i mean then i've had people literally um harass me um on the roads and make fun of me and i have been laughed out of every corporate office that you can think of over here uh, because i've said what i do is holistically feasible and viable for a better society because i start from the grassroots level of education i don't teach abc 1 to 3 i teach empathy and empathy is what a person needs to build character and abc will get you that far empathy will make you something there's a very big difference in my education that i provide children and what an average school will provide kids 
I just don't understand people. Uh, the, uh, the only time I've cried over an animal's death is when Bacha Do said to me, "You might know him, Jibran Khalik." Uska he had a, I think it was an ACF rescue okay. scout, and it just uh, was on a walk, and somebody had thrown poison meat. But the why? Like, what is going on with your father? Right? Because you are not doing it. Yeah, absolutely. What is going on with your father? And so we were running an office, and we were working out of Jibran's house. So scout was always there, and then. We, I found this out, and it was just like it's Wait, just McCune. there's no need, like and and that's the thing, and you know that, that that's another thing. I don't tell people you must love animals. My family doesn't love animals. I'm the only animal lover in my immediate family. They are not they are not animal people, but they wouldn't abuse an animal. They wouldn't even think about it, right? किसी के घर में कुत्ता है उसका पेट है आपके बाप का क्या जा रहा है like uh, yeah. why would you go out of your way to kill someone like Because we can and we can get away with it, and we are not held accountable for it. So we want to exercise our violence, which, in other words, means that we are projecting our helplessness through the weapon of violence to make ourselves feel better. Do you feel like it's just that general desensitization to violence or propensity to violence that we have, or do you also feel like the cultural or religious values that, for, for instance, कुत्ते ना पाक होते हैं घर में नहीं होने चाहिए? No, I think all of that. Sh- sure, it plays a part, but I think. an average person who has a relatively good heart wouldn't even connect the dots that okay that means you kill a dog mm-hmm. do you know what i mean i think that has more to do with our just like with women and men over here mm-hmm. right there is such a massive divide that how can a man tolerate a woman like not Covering existing. her head or existing or Pretty wearing much. whatever, yeah, yeah. right? It's 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 the intolerance. The intolerance comes from the fear of some of the other. I think it's fear. Fear leads to bullying. A bully is someone who's terrified, right? Any bully, when you stand up to them or you get to know them, you realize they're a terrified kid who's using anger as a way of protecting themselves. Mm-hmm. and that is we are we just have that we 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 are born we and you know another thing that I'll touch upon i think we've spoken for a long time no 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 are you we sure have, what time is it we, we i don't unless you have to go somewhere oh, no but why but, i don't okay fine no, we have to cuz we also have of questions that people need to ask oh okay yeah, that's yeah. nice so i had uh, i had one thought i had to talk about was toxic masculinity and um i don't know i i know we all talk a lot about women and it's so great that finally we're talking about it But we, but we don't talk about how a man becomes this violent man that he becomes, and the the mm-hmm. way we have inculcated these values of what a man is supposed to be. Like something like in school, if your voice hasn't cracked in puberty and your friends have, can you imagine the kind of shame you are feeling? Simultaneously, you're told boys don't cry, so internalize all of that, right? You haven't grown facial hair yet, but your friends have. You're not a man. You know, you are sitting. I've seen so many times. Um, you know these very uh, sweet young little boys who are, you know, maybe they they are sitting with their father at like a dhaba or something or the mm-hmm. other. We've seen. I've seen so many stories. I met so many people in my line of work. You know, and they really do care about the dog who's hungry or they want to feed a bird or something or the other. And the father's just laughing, and the friends make fun of him, and then he's like, "Okay, no, I can't. I have to be this person. I'm not allowed to have feelings, right?" Or even the mothers, you know, mad bano. You have to be a man. You have to be the provider. You have to do this. You have to do that. And when you have so much pressure to even just be the provider, it takes away that element of being a human, in a way. So again, I like looking at both sides of everything. You know. What I mean, so I think this is the way you have a balanced, educated discussion about things. So I think over here, even I think there's so much. I think toxic masculinity equates to intolerance towards anything that doesn't fit the norm yep. that you have been trained to know. So we need to get to the root of toxic masculinity and work from there, rather than attacking the men who are already there. You know what I mean, but yeah. let's start having those uncomfortable situations, those those conversations. Con- conversations that are about mm. where it stems from. Mm. What are we doing wrong, right? For example, you know, a lot of girls, you want the man to be your provider always, right? He and that's fine, that's okay, that's yeah. But you know, uh, it's it's like something like paying for dinner, right? If you're going on a date, maybe offer to pay for dinner too. I'm not gonna kill you. It's like, why is it always the man's job, right? What if the man doesn't have money that day, and if it, does it make him less of a man? 
You know, there are lots of questions that we don't. Women get paid eighty. Three percent to every hundred percent that the man makes, they should pay for dinner. Yeah, <laughs> okay, fine. 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 I don't even know if I want to get married, right? I'm gonna think about it. Um, but a a person like me, for example, then people sort of pigeonhole me in a certain way that oh she must be like this or she must be like that, right? So it even a woman who wants to be financially independent and free and doing her own thing, she is then even seen as there's something wrong with her because why aren't you dying to get married to this rich guy who's dying to marry you? You know what I mean? It's like maybe I want something. Who's this rich guy? उसकी बहन है कुछ मुझे भी शादी करनी है. Rich guy अगर आप सुन रहे हैं और आपकी कोई बहन वहन है. There are quite a few, so I think they would get confused as to which one we're talking about right now. I I don't care as long as they're all rich. I don't have a preference here, quite clearly. <laughs> But it is one of these it's, things, it's right? The it is. It's 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 like that. Then why is the girl? And because it pigeonholes a woman, then yeah. right? Why is the girl? Only meant to do this in her life. You're actually sort of sticking her with just this one hole, and she's on a ladder. She's pigeonholed in this way, and she can't do anything else. One hundred percent. I don't think men realize that gender roles hurt them, and a lot of times, uh, these kids think they're being very smart by saying, "Agar itna feminism chahiye, to dhai lene jao." Nee, to wo bhi aapke is hak ke upper. And the a fact woman has given birth to you. You do you know what I mean? You are coming from a woman, regardless. They're just. Too, it's not as simple it's as it's the same sense. thing. Feminism is also standing against the fact that you build a society where only men are allowed in certain spaces. So the the dhai wala space, the nan wala space. Yeah. The fact that you've created them as masculine spaces. It's yeah. not like a woman has an issue walking five hundred meters to get dhai or yeah. nan. It's that the society that you've created would ensure that a woman would not feel comfortable yeah. walking to that space. So it's not that five hundred meter walk that. uh is the problem it's the society that we're trying to change so, so you're think, saying the same thing yes and i think we need to really backtrack do you yeah. know we need, we need to sort of so, sort of like you know you know how you do in a film where you just rewind and you go all mm. the way back to the beginning so we backtrack from all the uh, landscapes we've built which are normal which are the male dominated mm. spaces and we see how they became male dominated and then as we do in therapy as well it always goes back to your childhood Right, yeah. so same over here. It goes back to our infancy of culture, and it goes back to what roles did the woman also give the man? What roles did she take, and what roles did the man give the woman, and what did he take? Right, and how how do both genders essentially uh, keep corroborating this toxic uh, culture that we live in? But we need to, we we must raise a mirror to both to have an educated, nuanced yeah. discussion. Otherwise, if you're going to be extremely one side and not even look at the other, you're not going to get anywhere in life. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's it, what we were talking about in terms of cancel culture as well. Uh, growing up, if we're all boys and there's somebody who's not as manly as yeah. us, we would, of course, bully. Yeah, I mean, we did this as lambs, and in my experience, the softest boys, once they were bullied and they turned into gym bros, they became the yeah. most toxic men. And we've unlearned a lot of this. Mm-hmm. And uh, my apologies to anybody that I bullied. Uh, but they've gone but the other really way. But that's really big of you to even acknowledge. No, no, I've that. done that's that several really, times. But that's really podcast, cool. But it's true, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, if you're in a group of boys, it's like kissing the bully. Hona hai. So you just have to make sure I'm not it today. Yeah, so it, those boys are not intrinsically evil. It's just the cultures that we've created. Mm-hmm. But once you bully somebody, then they go to the other extreme to show how much of yes, a man that they are. Absolutely. Gym gym ja ke jab unke biceps aa jaate hain, face pe fir bhi baal nahi aate. But now they're like, <laughs> ab ham zada mard mm-hmm. banenge. And yeah. somehow the only way to show what a mard you are is to is to be hateful and violent towards women. Exactly. So you know, and then so what? So where is all this coming from? So we do need to dial it back, dial it back, dial it back. We got to really have some uncomfortable situations where we collectively, at least those who are in this luxurious position where we get to have discussions like this, we must have more of them, which are uncomfortable without the fear of getting cancelled for sharing something that might make another person feel offended. You know what I mean? And if we can have such discussions openly, 
honestly we might not be able to put certain systems in place in current uh, infrastructures that do exist that could perhaps edit things mm. and it'll become a trickle down effect to other parts and classes of society as you say so i need to start from somewhere let me also run another thought process that has evolved uh, in my head over the past few years okay. i uh, i think once i started reading about the world and uh, figuring things out i started thinking of idol as i something by evil right and obviously the way that we do it throwing the intestines on the road doing it in front of everybody having these rivers of blood that is not islamic and it is uh, quite disgusting the way that we do it but i thought it was intrinsically evil but then i went to the us and i found the notion of factory farming to be nauseating and it was so easy to go to the supermarket get your meat yeah. and then waste it and not mm-hmm. care about it and somehow I'm, i'm at a place where i think it's maybe a lot more humane to see that this is the animal and this animal has had to give its life for us to be fed as a family and once you have that relationship yeah. and you have that notion of sacrifice at least you respect the you food respect, yeah. that is on your table yeah. which is why hunting is maybe a lot more humane than factory farming um uh hunting i'm not a fan of but it, at least like you're there and that's this animal and a lot of hunters would say that we don't waste any part of the animal no, I whereas get all a, i mean that. if you go to a shadi okay but but let's let's come for a moment i'm going to dial you back a little Gee. bit but what is the premise of hunting the premise of hunting and if you remove the predator and prey part of it it is literally oh wait let me clarify uh-huh. i don't mean glory hunting Achha, i mean okay, the then? old concept of hunting where you hunt for your ah, food ah like hunt and gatherer kind yes. of hunting acha okay i, I thought like, you meant nahi 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 not got like ye jo tasveer khichwane ke liye nahi nahi wo wale acha okay got it um yeah i think well this is it would be more like if you can respect the animals that you are eating because even right now people keep the goats and the cows and the chickens we call them livestock i myself don't like that word because now i have i have goats right at the shelter i have i have cows and they have great personalities and i myself had a lot of selective empathy like i was thinking dogs cats donkeys you know and slowly so i was like no wait a second they feel exactly the same way too and there are certain animals that we eat right so okay fine even if you're eating them keep treat them with respect so yeah i would say what you're saying is this if you're saying this kind of hunting that is more humane than fa- factory farming is something else but even in this kind of hunting it is very inhumane right now with the way we do it and if we were doing it in the ethical ways the animal should not suffer prior to death and the animal should not suffer during death nor should there be anxiety caused to the animal watching his brethren be slaughtered in front of him type of a thing so at the moment in my opinion all of it is bad so i can't really cuz they all have their their downfalls but obviously factory farming is really removing the individual from you know the 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 food but even over here it is removing the individual from the food if you can actually see the animal as an individual as a sentient being before you and that's the thing you actually can't cuz we all live in the state of cognitive dissonance where you can't you can hold two opposing views at the same time and live with it so if you do start seeing the cow or the goat as a sentient being or a chicken as a sentient being you might not be able to eat it then so it's even a thing in our dna as part of i guess the evolutionary process where we need to switch off this is why humans have that ability of cognitive dissonance where you can switch off a certain part of your brain that contrasts with the other part of it because if you are to eat in your, your hunter gatherer mm. brain you're thinking i need to survive so i got to eat this but the moment you start seeing the animal as a sentient being you say shit i don't think i can do this do you know what i mean this is a this is a topic for another time with a lot of layers to it no i mean on uh, lsd once i did have, have the same thought right where i'm like these all these animals are sentient yeah. beings so 100% uh but i do still consume meat So I I agree with you that both yeah. these things can exist at the same time. It is a very but it it gets people can't live with that discomfort either. And so I think it actually aggravates violence in a person because you try to run away so much from the discomfort of them being a sentient uh, a, 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 a sentient mm. being. So you become more violent because it's better to oscillate and function in extremes rather than remain in the middle in a state of awareness. 
So that's essentially how the human experience happens. So the whole point of the human experience is very easy to live in an extreme. It is really hard to center yourself in the middle, to be able to live with all opposing thoughts and the discomfort of them and stay with it. Which is why I think meditation is really helpful. Yeah, and I think if, if we come to a point uh, where uh, beyond meat and impossible meat and all these things uh, exist, yeah. maybe then we can have a lot more nuanced conversation. I think so, yeah. I don't, I, I personally don't describe to the thought that historically, just, just because if anybody's consuming meat, they're Hitler. Like, no, I mean, it's not like that. I think it has a lot more to do. It's far more nuanced than, that's not about being Hitler if you're consuming meat. I have... I, also I mean, that's a lot. That's how a lot of vegans somehow. No, that is, to. and but honestly, I don't blame them either, because when you see the kind of suffering that happens with animals, um, it's really hard to not hate human beings for it. So I get it. I I I, I get that side. And on so I, like when you and when you really know animals and you have a relationship with animals, it is really hard. Like right now, like I try to go vegetarian. It was really hard. Plus, I got a vitamin D deficiency, so now I need to edit my diet as to how that's going to work. So now I eat meat like three times a week, right? But when I do eat it, I I have to switch off that part of my brain. I'm being very honest. I literally know I'm going through the cognitive dissonance. Where I'm like, okay, this is not. This is not just eat it so I'm not even enjoying it because I'm just eating it because I know I have to because I go to the gym and I know I'm going to I'm going to injure mm. my back again and something else will happen so I've done it do you know what so I mean and that's so what I'm saying right? it's in, a big struggle in that me. paradigm I think being conscious of what you eat and respecting it is a lot better than like for instance if we go to the yes we see it as in terms of monetary value of food wastage right yeah. but literally with char panch zinda they gave their lives to go yeah to, to go in the yeah. garbage it's and you've not respected that Absolutely. you've not respected that fact yeah. in fact you're maybe a lot more concerned about acha yaar mere 50000 rupaye the ye jo 50 plate thi yeah that Absolutely. Is, is a bigger factor I so think, if in sorry, a paradigm where we do consume yeah. meat maybe having a lot more respect to, for it and having that relationship with the food and respecting uh, every single part i mean i personally oh yeah, no, also I don't totally get it. consume get every it. single part yeah, of the no, animal no, but no, no, people no. who do yeah i think being a lot more respectful oh yeah, that to makes the sense. life than as as opposed to i get that I'll, i'll 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 tell you what i think though that must be tackled simultaneously is gluttony hmm. because gluttony is a human vice and as as long as gluttony is something that we are unaware of and we indulge in more and more because gluttony also uh, uh it it symbolizes status right so there there's so many connections of nuance over here that you have gluttony gluttony is sta- you know it sort of symbolizes status status symbolizes who you are in the world right who you are in the world it it actually it impacts your mental health so there are so many things to dial back up to simultaneously be like but this is food wastage yes right so it's okay if i'm having a lavish wedding i don't have to get food if i ordered if i if i'm invited 10000 people i shouldn't be getting food for 20000 people it runs out it's not the end of the world right but if it runs out then you are made to feel like oh my god you know they, they didn't have enough food at the wedding can you believe it so they're so stingy then all of that comes up right three sat dishes na ho to it's like that. what they had two dishes that's it i mean if you show up to an american wedding without having rs we beat they'll be like mm, we didn't get a plate for you yeah yeah and you'll just be <laughs> sitting there being like i don't the khana bhi nahi diya but every gets a plate of food yeah you don't get like a buffet with 600 things yeah but this is this is gluttony right and gluttony symbolizes how powerful we are in society So if you have seven to eight dishes, then obviously you are going to be rich. respected, rich, mm-hmm. and you are so much better than those people who have like one dish. Ha ha. Yeah, be me. Recently, cool था. Recently, ने काफी time बाद where they had those dynamite pro shrimps are now uh-huh. like the cool शादी oh, really? appetizer. Oh really? I didn't know that. And I was <laughs> like, अच्छा. अब ये 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 level आ गया. लोगों के बहुत ज़्यादा सवाल आते हैं. Oh uh, really? I, I think I thought we'll talk about all the things that you do, including literature and philosophy. But इतनी सारी बातें थीं. अच्छा. Hopefully, we can have you back again. But let's get to people's questions. Please give her a standing ovation. Sorry, my frames are out. हो जाऊँगा. बहुत मुश्किल होगा. Thank She's you. She's a <laughs> legend <laughs> and. A hero i'd like to ask how she manages to keep calm and continue doing this way work when faced with so many terrifying situations and tragically pained animals oh thanks i think i've kind of answered mm. that though right in this 
Thank you, whoever sent this question. It's such a empathetically kind question because you know a lot of people look at the work and they love seeing me as some kind of hero, but they don't realize that there's a human behind this, and it is really traumatizing for me. So yeah. I really appreciate this person for sending in that question. Finally. Excited to see Aisha on the podcast. Please ask her whether we can see ACF as a country-wide network in the future, and how we can help in the process. Oh my gosh, I, th- that is what the vision is. This is why I'm working my ass off as well because I really want to make this a country-wide thing. I think we've created such a good system, and I just this is why I need the money. It's really expensive, and it takes a lot to. And I would not do. I would not put my name on something unless I know it's going to be really good. So I can do a mediocre version. But I wouldn't do that because it'd be an injustice to the animals. So hopefully, as I'm building all these businesses and I'm working really hard, I'm hoping I make the money where I can make us a little self-sustainable, and I will be opening in other cities for sure. Ask her how we can stop religious traditions that cause animal suffering. I think we've more or less discussed yeah. the main one. And I yeah, and I don't think it's about you. It's 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 not about stopping. Like, yeah. I don't know about that. It's 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 too much of I I don't even. know how to get into this it's, it's also very, sometimes we mix religion where it doesn't belong and kisi ne post kiya hua tha koi cartoon tv par aa raha hai and they've censored the pig like on oh. television in a cartoon what ye aur wo jo sharia in the uk type uk ke log hain they said three little pigs jo kahani hai that's uh, offensive to muslims so they had to change it now it's not they don't teach three little pigs anymore in the uk it's That? three little other animals because how interesting so, ये कब आपको मजहब ने बोला है कि पिग्स की एग्जिस्टेंस इनफैक्ट वो तो अच्छा कह रहे हैं मत खाओ मत खाओ मत करो जुल्म उन पर बट सेंसरिंग देम फ्रॉम एग्जिस्टेंस आई मीन इन इन व्हाट वर्ल्ड इज दैट ओके इवन यू नो दीस नोशंस वी हैव समहाउ के चिपकली को मारना सवाब है क्यों भाई किसने बोला कहां लिखा हुआ है या 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 इट्स अ वाव यू हर्ड दिस यस यस वाव आई डोंट नो दैट चिपकली ने चुगली की थी ना दैट्स नोशन द स्पाइडर्स आर एक्चुअली गुड स्पाइडर्स यू शुड नेवर किल ओके या आई वांट अबाउट द स्पाइडर्स और द चिपकली या 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 सो अच्छा बाय द वे द चिपकली और चिपकली चिप चुप आई मीन दे आर नॉट चुप दे डू हैव यू हर्ड चिपकली हैव यू हर्ड अ चिपकली डू यू कॉल इट डू आई कॉल इट चिपकली चिप योर चुप और चिप chip right it is shit i lost i thought it was a <laughs> chip killing they're not chip i thought they were silent but they were silent they are silent nahi they what they are what did sound? i hear some jinn was it a not a lizard this really? one time i heard this really <clears throat> like weird frequency noise coming what? out of a lizard and i was like shit ye inke wo jinn the oh my gosh yeah i should have done you that tabish a- bit on the chip killing and be like agar tum jinn ho to bata do uh Have you, have you Abdullah? Have you ever heard this lizard? Okay, just yeah, just you. Surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> in one of the most inhuman places on this earth, is it possible for even a passerby to consider a person that humane ascending from? Tarifa hi honi hai apki sirf. Oh, that's so planted, nice. Planted, planted questions. That's really sweet. <laughs> If you sweet. ever feel it, never enough, go through these. Yeah, well, that's so nice. Screenshot these and send this. Uh, this is a place where women live within four walls, like cage animals. How to make sense of a woman? talks of caring for animals how did you how how do you exist in a place like pakistan is it is really hard it actually is it is hard not playing the woman card or anything but it is because you have to be 20 times louder you have to be 20 times more astute and sharp and you have to really weaponize yourself with every kind of skill and knowledge and understanding that when you walk into a room no man ever had the audacity to put you down um, because they do that and they do it very subtly and i used to pick up on and i wouldn't know how to respond and now i know how to but i really had to build myself up to becoming this person now where i'm not afraid of saying what it is and i will put a person right back in their place but it is hard uh, especially even at work it's very hard for a lot of men to comprehend that the woman is the boss they keep saying aapke father kidhar hai ye kaun hai unhone aapke liye banaya tha i'm like nahi maine ye sab akele kiya hai which is why you, i'm glad you named it acf yeah i should have right like now it, yeah <laughs> no i mean i never know i could fail tomorrow you never know about that right but another thing but even all the tarifa they're really sweet but i don't like anybody putting me on a pedestal because i am a human and i am subject to mistake but i'm also very open about acknowledging and accepting them i have no egos over that but i don't like the savior thing cuz the higher you put a person on a pedestal the quicker you can bring them down i learned that through that trolling incident mm. 
So welcome to my life. <laughs> I appreciate it, but I don't. Uh, it doesn't. I don't register such things. Uh, just love her for the work she's doing. If I was in Karachi, I'd be working with her. She's such an inspiration. Please ask her if seen if she has seen a shift in the treatment people uh, meet out to animals, especially donkeys, after her team has been teaching them and giving them harnesses and carts. We've discussed that. Yeah, too. and yeah. I've seen a big difference. But I was saying, forty-five completely super healthy donkeys, and we don't know what to do. It was great. Uh, given the humanitarian crisis in our country, what's her vision on both industrial and individual mindset on in? and animal treatment and how do you deal with local myths like killing domestic lizards na pak kutta we've discussed that Haan, but we've discussed that industrial but industrial level ye to zyada ho gaya so in, but what does that mean industrial level Maybe like factory farming on a or industrial level pe kya hota hai janwaron ke sath i'm guessing that's yeah. what they are referring to i think we need to slowly get that i think we need to start off with animals that are relatable to people this is why when people say jump the gun and get to uh, uh, cows get to this i've taken a few years to get them because you need to slow, when you're introducing a new concept no one likes change you got to slowly build you can start with cats then dogs then donkeys eagles monkeys and now i've got to goats i've been observing the way society functions and i know when to throw what in to make sure there's no backlash but there's more acceptance so i think through social media and acf i i'm sort of trying to pivot the movement in a way that is uh that is easy for people to digest without backlash do you have a take on the milk industry uh yeah honestly i my my take on that is that we shouldn't we don't even need milk we can easily now, and now mm. all the other milks that they're too expensive for the average person to afford like almond milk and oat milk or whatever mm. but technically they should be cheaper and they actually taste really good so we don't actually need the milk of a cow and those cows are taken away from the babies are taken mm. away from the calves uh, that from yeah f- from the mums and they live miserably and then they die so or they're used for you know whatever meat it's just really messed up so yeah i don't think we need milk uh if i could have a podcast with anybody i'd have it with the first person who consumed cow milk like kya soch kya raha tha <laughs> just looked at a cow and was like yaar that's really interesting yeah is, is, i really get that calf ko to maza aa raha hai main bhi zara like no other animal does that right it. like yeah. it's quite a weird thing that is really weird that's look true look at an animal and be like ew ew i mean imagine him going back to his friend like aaj maine kya kiya <laughs> I know that is insane. <laughs> like you discussed, no, no, you will try. Cancel, I'm going to miss that. How does she deal with our bullshit society who have no regards with animals for animals? How she again recoup the st- recoup the strength after a tragic in- incident, which shakes him to the core. Yeah. Sweet. No, but I understand <laughs> what you're saying. Uh, example: pe- people poisoning the animals yeah. in her rescue center. Oh man! <laughs> Sweet. So they actually know about this. It's this is what I'm saying. It's really hard, and you need to. I would have not been alive if I didn't know how to have the mental discipline to deal with that. So I have really had to learn, and I can't even share experiences unless I'm like sitting and just talking about the experiences, which we might do another time. But um, instead of learning to deal with, yeah, it's been, and I'm still learning. I still don't know how to grieve. So I think I'm working on autopilot in some ways, and I'm now realizing just how much grief I have, and I don't know how to deal. So I am in the process, right? And so what I'm saying, I'm human too. I'm not some superhero. And I don't like people to say that or think that about me, because. But I true. think being human is what makes you a superhero, right? And yeah. It's easy for Superman to do what he does, but having uh, faced the issues, having uh, you know, no, faced no the grief, no superpowers like that, yeah, yeah, and then to do it still, it's what makes humans a lot more super than I Superman. So. Nice uh, opportunity. How she got inspired to rescue animals, and what Pakistan can learn from India, as we are the largest vegetarian country in the world. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. about the India part because I don't think or should they the largest well, I didn't even know that part. That's really interesting. Cuz uh, there's also a religious component there, right? Mm, so yeah, yeah, about that, that of course, in. yeah. Um but I think um I think we can just learn to be more humane yeah. overall and I think that goes for I think the world in general but yeah, I think our society can most definitely learn to be humane on all fronts. Uh I think we've spoken about what inspired you her thoughts mm. on the name the trait argument the you know, what name the trait argument 
इट्स सम वीगन आर्गुमेंट आई हैव नो आईडिया एज़ वेल स्किप कर देते हैं नेम द ट्रेड आई डोंट नो आई हैव नेवर हर्ड ऑफ दैट बट आई थिंक दैट मे बी समथिंग अबाउट आ आई डोंट नो इज इट इज इट गूगल या कज आई एम रियली क्यूरियस नाउ इज इट समथिंग अबाउट आ um like the the personality traits of an animal Oh, and how they are uh, is an is an argument for veganism formulated by vegan youtuber ask yourself in 2015 theek hai to bata bhi dena hai kya uh the argument goes as follows establish that moral devaluation requires justification that mm-hmm. is essentially saying that to say someone or something has no value morally you must provide a justification for said devaluation we've discussed that honestly i think the future is veganism and i think the world is heading them I think at least the first world countries and all will get there before us, but I think the world is definitely heading towards it, and we would be better for it. Her vision for systematic or policy level change for animal rights. That's a really, that's a really good one. Um, the more awareness I can spread, because you see, people say, "Where are the laws? I shall bring the laws." Mm. It is not so easy to bring in laws. You can even, uh, uh, you know, make laws which I've made, mm. but implementing them is a whole other thing. I have to build and build and build and build. First, I have to garner that kind of support. The more it comes from the public, any revolution, any change in any country, if you look at history, it is the people who want the change. And so we need to increase the number of people. So right now, I'm focused on the awareness to garner that kind of an audience, so that when I say I want animal rights, I will not just get it; it'll be implemented like a norm. Her, uh, her stance on high court since stopping from killing stray dogs even though they killed a young child in Lyari So okay this is a very interesting one because I have spoken about this several times but what what I find interesting is that what we like to do is create a mass hysteria which is based on uneven facts all right it is dog bites and dog attacks are the most traumatizing thing anyone can go through and no one should as you know it's some kid it's horrible but at the same time this is one child and you're killing about 5000 dogs this it doesn't mm. even up even if you say human life matters more great but these 4099 dogs are not okay. hurting anybody right and even the dog who did that you need to actually sit back and reflect where did we go wrong as a society that do- that man's best friend which is a dog can turn on man yeah we went wrong as a society so rather than you know jumping into mass hysteria kill all the dogs take them all to your shelter all these stupid things that people say look at what the world has done to control their dog population and look at the reasons why dogs become aggressive and that i think which I mean, if you walk in istanbul at, it's like the dogs are the friendliest creatures in the world they're just chilling and they are the same over here i promise you i don't have a single aggressive stray dog at my shelter because when they come they are hurt they are abused so of course as we said behind anger the sadness they're going to yeah. be aggressive the moment you give them a little bit of love they're the sweetest things ever या आई मीन हम हम जो करते हैं गाड़ियां मार देते हैं ऑफ कोर्स दे विल बाक एट डॉग्स यू पॉइजन देम यू शूट देम यू किक देम यू बीट देम विद स्टोन्स यू कट ऑफ द इयर्स इफ यू डू ऑल ऑफ दीस थिंग्स यू रन ओवर द लेग यू लाफ अबाउट यू थ्रो एसिड ऑन देम व्हाट डू यू एक्सपेक्ट देम टू डू इफ समवन डिड दिस शिट टू मी आई एम गोना डू 50 टाइम्स बैक टू देम सो मे बी वी नीड टू होल्ड अप अ मिरर टू आवरसेल्व्स टू सी व्हेयर वी आर गोइंग रॉन्ग रादर देन एक्टिंग लाइक एंटाइटल्ड ब्रैट्स थिंकिंग जस्ट बिकॉज़ वी डोंट लाइक समथिंग एंड बिकॉज़ वी आर क्रिएटिंग अननेसेसरी डिसइंजेन्युअस मैस हिस्टीरिया वी डिजर्व बिकॉज़ वी विल नॉट बी हेल्ड अकाउंटेबल टू टेक इनोसेंट लाइव्स दैट डोंट डिजर्व टू बी टेकन Why are there zoos? Shouldn't we end the zoo culture? Hundred yes. percent. Zoos are the most barbaric, illiterate, stupid thing that we could ever have. They are so backwards. It is ridiculous. What is even better? is why can't if you want to boost our tourism in our country have wildlife sanctuaries like they do in Nepal you know it's it's actually better for the environment it's good for ecosystem and you can actually get a lot of uh tourists coming in for this and animals can be in the natural reserves in a way so if you are to do something replace those stupid cages which are jails for animals who have no idea why they've been picked up from the beauty of the jungle and put into some concrete a jail for no reason that is not even teaching a child anything all a zoo does is teach a child that you're allowed to control and dominate over anything weaker than you and you can treat it however you want and can you, can you not see how that translates into our treatment of women would this also apply to something like the steve irwin 
zoo in australia which is so uh, much for preservation and no learning. i think those are really yeah. good yeah this is what i mean if we create wildlife sanctuaries and these kind of you know preservations mm-hmm. those are amazing why why don't we do that that's actually yeah. education that we can learn from it's, it would be amazing but seeing a lion pace back and forth in his den is not the same as seeing him I sleepily know. chilling you know like lion king and simba and mufasa yeah. hanging out that is that is what you want to yeah. see and be in awe of the universe we have reduced the universe to concrete hell 100% i think it's it's easier to feel humanity towards something like a monkey or a dog but when you see a crocodile you just see evil but what They're steve not. steve irwin has yeah. done to humanize mm-hmm. crocodiles and snakes mm-hmm. and animals like this is is insane yep. and and the, uh, his children are continuing his legacy rest in peace steve i'd like to her to discuss about animal experiments that are pretty common in the life sciences for example yeah. animals such as mice rats rabbits used to test new drugs and therapies which can be pretty painful to them this is the again this is one of the worst things because majority of the experiments as peter singer the philosopher who's a big are animal right they are and they don't whatever we test out on animals actually does not translate into that it would work or not on humans we are literally just finding a justification for torturing animals and there are several studies to prove this that we don't actually need animals for the kind of experimentation that we do on them it is not needed especially for all these for makeup and for this and for that putting a mascara on a bunny rabbit's eyelashes It's not going to tell you whether it's going to, you know, make your your eyes burn or not. It actually doesn't work that way. So by this time, especially in the twenty first century, we should be coming up with dummy models mm. that actually can react the way a human does and use those. And we should be spending more time on that than taking poor animals that have no their genetic makeup is not like ours. and their reactions to certain things or medications or drugs could actually makes mo- no difference it's just a justification for your sadistic pleasure please ask her about her beef with miss yasmin zaidi who's miss yasmin zaidi what's your beef i don't have any beef with her i think she she's one of these animal uh, rights people and i think she's fine i don't have any beef please ask even i want to know what the beef is i'm so curious आज तक लो आस्क मी दिस ये जब वो डॉक्यूमेंट्री बनेगी ना पाकिस्तान के एनिमल राइट्स एक्टिविस्ट टाइगर किंग अच्छा मैंने सीन टाइगर किंग है ना सीन इट्स इनसेन इट्स आई थिंक इट आल्सो केम आउट एट द राइट टाइम व्हेयर वी डिडंट हैव मच टू वॉच इट कोविड हैड जस्ट हिट सो इट बिकेम अ ग्लोबल फिनोमेना बट इट इज क्वाइट इनसेन एज वेल फेवरेट मेमोरी ऑफ अ रेस्क्यू फेवरेट मेमोरी ऑफ अ रेस्क्यू अम आई गेस इट वुड बी Favorite memory. There was this dog we had. His name was Luke, and I'd put up his story, and I called him the dog who was made of stone because he was someone's pet Labrador, and he was so neglected that his entire body had become stone from fungus. So he was like gray stone. It was literally like Medusa had turned him to stone. And after a lot of treatment and a lot of care. He actually we didn't even know he was a labrador because his eyes had turned to stone his entire body was gray if i send you a picture and i send you the before and after you won't believe it's the same dog and when the fungus started leaving and breaking literally was breaking off in our hands then we realized he's a beautiful black lab and he's the sweetest little guy and i think it was such a visually uh what's the word visually beautiful um that you know transformation that i've ever seen that will stay with me forever and also i'd li- i'd like to say one more thing i don't have beef with anybody i think people have beef with me but i'm not really i don't have time It's to have beef just three times a week though <laughs> does <laughs> but i don't i don't does think any do. pakistani government body help her ah uh, no i don't i don't take help like yeah they'll help like if i say i'm going to go to empress market or you know if mm. i want to try to stop the culling So I don't think there's any particular body that helps me per se, but this is where I ask them for help. But I don't take any help from uh, um, the government. Ah, uh, let's just end it with uh, this question: favorite mm-hmm. animal you like to spend most time with, and why? Donkeys. And why? <laughs> <laughs> They are, I guess, donkeys and dogs. But uh, donkeys are the most calming animals. If you are ever stressed or you're super anxious or you need to think about something or you need to meditate or you just need to get away from the humdrum of life 
and just watch donkeys let them come and nuzzle you and cuddle you and hug you and you instantly feel better cuz they literally take all your stress into their their silent empathic stoic ways and they just like hug you It's i mean if they're nice. able to bring out a nice person out of shrek yeah they can do it thank you thank you so thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much everybody for listening Thank you Aisha for your time and hope Thank to have you, you back in here again sometime soon to discuss for us. It was fun. It was really great. Time. It was great. Thank you for having uh, me. Thank you for coming on and thank you for really listening. Take care. Bye.